enough for a wild card spot in their own division. I think San Francisco finds a way with that crowd noise to win. Thanks for watching NFL Kickoff. <laughs> Welcome to Dr. Pepper Championship Week. In downtown Detroit, big dreams for Northern Illinois. Jordan Lynch's last chance to impress Heisman Trophy voters. His Huskies a win away from a third straight MAC title and almost certainly a second straight trip to the BCS. Bortles roll to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, UCF. Central Florida hands Louisville its first loss. 2013. Give it right to Miles Jack. Touchdown. Second rushing touchdown. This is skill. Fourth rushing touchdown of the night. This is superstar stuff. Reynolds, keeper. Touchdown. Navy walks into the end zone. Untouched. Touchdown. Reynolds again. A late night thriller on Friday night. Welcome once again to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. From downtown Detroit, this is the 2013 Marathon MAC Championship game matching Bowling Green and 14th ranked Northern Illinois. Welcome to Ford Field with Danny Cannell, Allison Williams. I'm Carter Blackburn. That number 14 next to Northern Illinois' name means they are in the top 16 in the BCS. A number of scenarios on this last weekend of the season, but bottom line, a Northern Illinois win tonight that all but guarantees a berth in a BCS Bowl. They're close to their goal. They wanted to get back to a BCS Bowl. They got there last year to the Orange Bowl. They want to get back, and not only get back, but they want to win a BCS Bowl. They've got a tough task to get there. Those Bowling Green defense top rated in the MAC. It's going to be a big test for them. And one of the big reasons why Northern Illinois is back in this position to bust the BCS is, of course, their senior quarterback, Jordan Lynch. Jordan Lynch is a special player. He gets compared a lot to Tim Tebow, but when I watch him on film, I actually think he's more talented than Tim Tebow. He's a great runner. He's physical, but he has a breakaway speed that I don't think you can teach. And then as a thrower, he's got more natural mechanics. He gets criticized a lot for playing in the MAC. But you surround him with the weapons that Tebow had at Florida. He could have had every bit of success. How about this? For a quarterback who also rushes, his numbers are better than one Heisman Trophy winner Mark Ingram had in 2009 at Alabama. And oh, by the way, there's a team also in this MAC championship, the Falcons of Bowling Green, led by Travis Green, the nation's 10th leading rusher, hoping to bust the Huskies' BCS dreams. Now just $200 and the best $200 camel hair value in America. We're making it work at Joseph A. Bank. The 2013 Marathon Mac Football Championship brought to you by the ultra-intuitive M-Series Smart TV from Vizio. It's beautifully simple. This is Jordan Lynch in sixth grade with a 1953 Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Latner from Notre Dame. And Jordan Lynch now is a potential finalist for the Heisman Trophy in a trip to New York. Our Wells Fargo Inside Access, Jordan's thoughts on the Heisman. Yeah, it'll be a dream come true. Um, you know, growing up, watching college football, it's a, you know, that's the biggest award you always think of, you know, winning the Heisman. And, you know, just to get an invite would be a dream come true. Um, you know, I know that's not, never going to happen if I don't, you know, keep my, you know, level-headed and just keep winning games. Heisman ballots are due on Monday. This is Jordan Lynch's last chance to impress. For more, we sit it down to Allison Williams. Well, Carter, NIU back in the MAC championship game where they have played some thrillers. In their four previous appearances at Ford Field, the game was decided in the final minute. Now, they were able to win the last two MAC championship games, but they had to overcome deficits of 10 and 20 points. And coaches reminded players of that throughout the week in practice. Head coach Rod carries that it is imperative that they get off to a strong start tonight 
In order to do that, they need to be physical up front and establish the run game. They're going to put the ball in the hands of their Heisman hopeful quarterback and look for him to grind out some yards on the ground. Northern Illinois won the toss and deferred, so Bowling Green will actually receive the opening kickoff here in the 2013 Marathon MAC Championship. Rod Carey is in his first season as the Northern Illinois head coach. He began last season as the offensive line coach. He ended up as the offensive coordinator. Took over as the head coach when Dave Doran took the NC State job. Dave Clawson, the program builder, he is engineered turnarounds at Fordham, at Richmond, and now at Bowling Green, taking them to the MAC championship game. A chance for the first MAC title for Bowling Green since 1992. Northern Illinois, a BCS buster from a season ago, tries to do it again. They've reached that threshold of inside the top 16 ahead of an automatic qualifying BCS team. That would be UCF from the American. If they get to 12, they are guaranteed a spot in the BCS Bowl. Ronnie Moore takes a knee, so a touchback to begin for Bowling Green. The diminutive first-year starter at quarterback for the Falcons is Matt Johnson from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania's Bishop McDevitt High School, accounted for 23 total touchdowns. And like many successful quarterbacks, Danny, a solid running game sets it up. Travis Green moved from wide receiver to running back in the spring, in part because he had trouble catching the football he is now the nation's 10th leading rusher at over 1,400 rushing yards. You said it, you said it, Carter. Matt's got the assistance of a strong running game. He really plays the part of game manager extremely well, making good decisions with the football. And yet Bowling Green opens up empty on first and 10. Johnson scrambling and completing on first down. That's Ronnie Moore, the true freshman, with just the 23rd catch of the season. Brought down by Durant. A good start for Bowling Green. You know, everybody's going to be focused defensively on Travis Green. When you've got that, one way to spread them out, kind of open, open up some running lanes for him, is by the pass game. Open it up. Bowling Green, who leads the nation in time of possession. The game plan clearly is... Move the football, long drives, keep it out of the hands of Jordan Lynch. And when you've got a defense that's as strong as theirs, that's a great formula. And that's Travis Green, who's still on the Bowling Green sideline. So the nation's 10th leading rusher on the Falcons' sideline to begin. Ronnie Moore is in the backfield with Matt Johnson. They give it to Ronnie Moore, who sprints ahead for a first down. So Moore, a 23-yard gain, and then he picks up 12 more on the ground. There is a Bowling Green player down. That's Sean Joplin, one of their key wide receivers on the outside, just kind of got tangled up there, blocking at the end of the play. And Ronnie Moore, who actually, you see him limping over on the sideline too. A couple players got banged up on the play for Bowling Green. Here's Joplin, who's coming in, kind of that ankle area gets rolled up. There's a couple guys around, around his feet. Good to see him walk off though. Joplin is coming off his biggest receiving game of the year, 149 yards in the win at Buffalo to wrap up the Mac East title for Bowling Green. So Travis Green is into the game. Joplin's out, Travis Green in there for the first time. The sophomore from Carroll City, Florida, joining Matt Johnson in the backfield. Green reverses course. And picks up eight. Jimmy Ward finally makes the stop, but it has been all Bowling Green. And to look at our impact player. Well, we talked a lot about Travis Green leading the ground attack for Bowling Green. Defensively for Northern Illinois, Jimmy Ward, he's a ball hawk, as quarterback Jordan Lynch described him. Then Ken Bishop, he is disruptive in the middle, in the interior of that Northern Illinois defensive front. But I tell you what, Carter, watching Bowling Green, I'm sure they're tired of hearing all the talk about Northern Illinois going to a BCS. They would love nothing more than to spoil that trip. Green on second and two. 
This is for a first down inside the 30 now for the Falcons. And Allison told us the mantra for Northern Illinois has been start fast, start fast, start fast. Opening possession for the Falcons, they have already marched it to almost the Northern Illinois 25. Yeah, and it's interesting to watch because they have a couple of freshmen at tackle on their offensive line. And a lot of this play calling is to protect them. Quick passes, quick hitting run game, sort of misdirection on the inside. Because that's definitely a concern for Dave Clawson facing this Northern Illinois rush, which can get to the passer. Joplin is back in the game for Bowling Green, bottom of the formation. Play clock winding down. They try to motion, and now Bowling Green will have to use its first timeout. An opening drive timeout. First timeout. Bowling Green, full timeout. The Falcons on the march. Can they strike first in Detroit? This guy's a pro. Her football lives here. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. The final year of the Bowl Championship Series, which presents odd scenarios like this. If Northern Illinois goes to a BCS Bowl, it's worth roughly $8 million more for the MAC Conference. Which means if Bowling Green loses this game, they benefit more financially. And that's not on the Falcons' minds right now. A rollout and a completion. That's bad. Touchdown, Bowling Green. Tyler Beck, the fullback. An opening drive touchdown for the Falcons. A 28-yard touchdown. Matt Johnson's 19th passing touchdown of the year. And Northern Illinois trails early in the MAC championship game again. Tyler Tate sneaks it in there, 7-0, Bowling Green. Jordan Lynch and the Huskies trail early. What a fast start, though, for Bowling Green. Great mix of play pass, run game pass. Have a look at the touchdown right here. This looks like a run, right? Watch the guard pull, looks like a power play. The action here in the backfield. But watch this tight end slide right underneath and then slip into the flat, and he's going to be wide open. He just got kind of lost in the wash because he came from the opposite side of the formation. Johnson gives him a good ball to run with, and then he cuts it back against the grain and finds his way into the end zone. Really impressive play for Bowling Green to start it off. Got to love it, too, when your big tight end gets out in the edge and finds his way into the end zone for those yards after the catch. Tyler Beck with a nice touchdown, and Matt... Johnson loves it. Those, those are the best touchdown passes. The easy ones, you just flip them out to the guy in the flat and let him do all the work. What a great start for Bowling Green. Bowling Green 8 0 when scoring first this year for Tyler Beck, the senior from Wyoming, Pennsylvania. That is just the ninth catch of his senior season, but the second for a touchdown. Northern Illinois, who trailed by 20 two years ago, got down 10 0 last year to Kent State. Down 7 0 after the first possession for Bowling Green. Anthony Farinella kicks off. Harris Logan from inside the five. Out of bounds right around the 25. So we see Jordan Lynch in the Husky offense. You rewind two years ago when Chandler Harnish was the outstanding Northern Illinois quarterback graduating, and everyone said, How could you possibly replace Harnish? Well, this is what Jordan Lynch has done in his senior year. <laughs> Not bad. And I remember, I covered Northern Illinois with Chandler Harness when he was quarterback, and remember specifically bringing that up. How are you going to replace a guy who meant so much to the program, really helped get Northern Illinois to where it is today? But I feel like these Northern Illinois coaches, they knew they had something special in Jordan Lynch. They weren't too concerned, and now you see why. Harness is now with the Indianapolis Colts. Lynch, keeper. Ridden down by Paul Swan, the middle linebacker for Bowling Green. I mean, when you look at Jordan Lynch, basically, you get an extra player on the field because you've got a quarterback who can throw it, but he runs like a running back. He's not afraid to take on linebackers head-on, 
He's got an extra speed that he can kick it into another gear when he gets on the outside. And then if you put eight and nine guys in the box, he can beat with a pass. Lynch again on second and six to make it third down and very short. There's DJ Lynch, the leading tackler for Bowling Green, as it's Lynch versus Lynch in that matchup. In the last six games, averaging eight yards a carry, 16 touchdowns, coming off a 321 rush yard performance versus Western Michigan. An FBS record, he broke his own FBS record, rushing yards by a QB. Sweet, Lewis on the edge, shoved out. Tommy Lee Lewis back in the lineup for Northern Illinois. Our impact players. Well, when you think about Northern Illinois, you think about Jordan Lynch, but don't forget about Cameron Stingley, a vital weapon at the running back position. Then for Bowling Green, DJ Lynch, leading tackler, just saw him make a play. And Boo Boo Gates shores up the secondary, kind of that rover that can pick up anything that pops out of the middle of the pack. First throw complete. That's Tommy Lee Lewis again, Aaron Foster on the stop. Jordan Lynch last year, solid numbers as a junior, really solid numbers, but didn't play great towards the end of last season. Offensive coordinator Bob Cole told us it's because he was playing with an injury for the last seven games of the season. Northern Illinois didn't make it public because of the uh, didn't want to give the opponents that knowledge. He played with an elbow injury two weeks earlier this season. That has not been made public, but now at the end of Northern Illinois, at the end of his senior season, uh, the coaching staff is saying, now we can tell you exactly what Jordan Lynch played through the last couple of years. Stingley straight ahead. Well, it's Swan on, makes the tackle, helmet comes off. I mean, it's remarkable when you think about a guy who carries it as much, takes the pounding that Jordan Lynch does, and you're not talking about a running back who can go off the field if he gets banged up. He's on the, he has to take the snap. He's the quarterback, and yet he is one of the toughest guys. That's why his offensive line, they love blocking for their quarterback. Motion. False start. Offense number 77, five-yard penalty, second down. And yes, Northern Illinois is wearing the hard way on the backs of all their uniforms. That's the uh, motto for this Northern Illinois program. Yeah, they got it up all over their weight room. It's kind of their, their chip on their shoulder. Hey, we do things the hard way, no shortcuts. Lynch to throw, incomplete. First miss for Jordan Lynch. Well, that could have been really dangerous. There was a flat defender. I feel, really feel that was a throwaway by Jordan Lynch. Wasn't anything there and just missed where, where he only could miss. Bringing up third and 12. He's got a man. Complete first down Huskies. In the middle of the zone, Jawan Breskison. That's a big time throw right there. Jordan Lynch had all day to survey the field. Great job of pass protection. Watch how much time he has. He, but this is what I like about him. He's a great runner, but he knows when to stay in the pocket. Knows he's got a third and long, his vision down the field. Juwan Breskison, I walked by him on the field. He is a big target. 6'4", 219 on the outside. Lynch chased, incomplete. Brian Thomas applies the pressure. A Bowling Green defense giving up just 14 points per game. That is fifth best in the FBS. So with all the attention to the Huskies' BCS chances, Jordan Lynch's Heisman chances, a Bowling Green team that is tough on both sides, expected to give the Huskies a test. Lynch pulls it. The blockers ahead. Lynch picks up the first down. Ryland Ward finally makes a stop. Carter, this is what I love about Lynch. He's got that gear that can take it to the second level. But what I really like about him, watch how he delivers a blow at the end. Watch him with a safety coming up to tackle him right there. Puts his shoulder in. He's not going down easy, and that's Ryland Ward. Their whip safety coming in run support. And they, they, they don't like seeing quarterbacks come at him like that. Lynch pumps, tosses, in zone, top, touchdown. There is a flag down. 
Gruskison hauls it in with a terrific grab. We'll see if it stands. Kidding me with the play here by Breskison on the outside. Cameron Truss, here's the play. There's the holding right there, but Cameron Truss just keeps working. Jordan Lynch puts a throw in the back of the end zone where only Breskison can take it, makes the one hit and it grab. That's got to be a Sports Center top 10. 7 0 start for Bowling Green. The Huskies answer. Friday night Maction is off and rolling. Touchdown drives from both the Falcons and the Huskies. Briskison, top 10. Time out for six. The 2013 Marathon Mac Football Championship brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit and Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Equipped for winter weather in DeKalb. Fortunately, things are uh, nice here inside Ford Field. The Huskies, Jordan Lynch, touchdown pass. Thought it was interesting when you asked Jordan yesterday, all right, it's fourth and five. Are you running it or are you throwing it? He wanted to pass it. That's a quarterback mentality. I tell you, when he pulls it down and runs it, he is really impressive as a runner, too. That's always how you can tell it's quarterback's true mindset. When you put him on the line and say, hey, what would you rather call? He said, I'd rather throw it all day. Passing touchdown to get Northern Illinois started. Weedle's kickoff results in a touchback. This is Jimmy V Week. To donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. 100% of donations awarded to cancer research. We are always proud to be a part of Jimmy V Week. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, your Friday night crew for the Marathon MAC Championship from Ford Field, home of the Detroit Lions and home of the MAC Championship. Northern Illinois has set up shop here in Detroit the last few years, including dramatic wins in each of the last two seasons. Last year, OT over Kent State and a trip to the Orange Bowl. Matt Johnson. Play action to Travis Green. Deep shot. Caught. Huge play for Bowling Green. Ronnie Moore. All the way inside the 15. Okay. How about a look at the big play? Bowling Green went play action on their touchdown. How about this one? Pulling guard again, but watch the slip out in the flat. Out and up. Matt Johnson, beautiful job, sticks it in the belly, good play action pass, and a perfectly thrown ball, keeps Ronnie Moore running for another Bowling Green big play, another great first down play call, keeping Northern Illinois on their heels. 61 yards, Johnson to Ronnie Moore, the true freshman wide receiver, now back to the ground for Travis Green, near the 11. So similar principle to the touchdown pass to Tyler Beck. Yeah, very similar. You know, it's a rundown situation. You're thinking, hey, we've got a sophomore quarterback. They've got a great running back. Maybe they're going to run it, but nope. Catch them off guards with a little play action. There's a Falcon down on the field. We'll check the number and let you know as soon as we can. Both teams opening drive touchdowns, and now Bowling Green's second possession. And if, if there is one vulnerability in Northern Illinois' defense, it is their secondary. While the training staff tends to Dominic Fluellen, we step aside. Thousands of Fathead products. Prices starting at $7.99 at fathead.com. Fathead. For real. How about a look at Bowling Green's offensive line? We talked about the vulnerability on the outside tackles as freshmen. The player that just went down, Dominic Fluellen, the most experienced lineman up front. And he's actually, they're filling in right now with J.J. Began, a freshman, another inexperienced offensive lineman. The good news, though, Fluellen did walk off the field. Looked like he might be able to come back, but 
right now some very young players up front for Bowling Green. Three freshmen on the offensive line now for the Falcons. Matt Johnson under center. Second drive for the Falcons. Flag down. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's the sophomore right guard, Alex Huddle. Yeah, I didn't see a whole lot of movement. It must have been a real subtle twitch. And there's a look at Began, who came in for one play, and Flewellen back in the game. So that's a good, good sign for Bowling Green to get their most experienced lineman back on the field. Johnson delivers. That's Heath Jackson, the junior X. How about the unique footwork and action from the quarterback, Matt Johnson? Watch when he catches. He just kind of stands there, gets the grip on the football, gets the laces, and then rifles it on the slant. Kind of unique. Usually, if you at least catch the football, normally you get a little bit of rhythm. It looked like James Franklin from Missouri. Yeah, it did. Big third down here for Bowling Green. Pressure coming. Johnson to the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Sean Joplin. That's Marlon Moore there in coverage. Fourth down. Dave Clawson brings on the field goal unit. And you saw again a quick throw, quick decision. I don't think they're going to have Matt Johnson sit back there and go through a bunch of progressions because of the offensive line, but a quick try to the outside to Sean Joplin missed just out of bounds. Tyler Tate made the last six kicks of the regular season. Bowling Green has not had a kick block all season long. 26 yarder, line drive, field goal good to give Bowling Green a 10-7 start. Jordan Lynch and the Huskies get the football down three. We come back in 60 seconds. Southern Illinois University. Grit, determination, tenacity. We are Huskies, champions in the classroom, in competition, in life. We are Northern Illinois University. Learning today, leading tomorrow. It's all in front of you, the options, possibilities. Don't have a stop yet in the 2013 Marathon MAC Championship. A pair of touchdown drives, and the Bowling Green Falcons get a 26-yard field goal. Touchback. Huskies get it at the 25. So here's as the crow flies from Ford Field in downtown Detroit to Bowling Green and to Northern Illinois and DeKalb. So the buses, they didn't cut across the lake, so on hashtag Friday Focus. See how they loaded up in DeKalb, Illinois, and Bowling Green, Ohio, and rolled up to Detroit. I don't know how the Sombrero plays in with the Huskies, but... <laughs> how about the Afro for Bowling Green? I don't know which one was better. I like them both. Thanks both for uh, fan support. Yeah, thanks for taking those photos and submitting them. Hashtag Friday Focus. This should be your last Friday Focus of the year. Lynch bottled up. Brian Thomas leads the way on first down. Well, we talked to Mike El Elko, defensive coordinator for Bowling Green, and said, all right, you're facing Jordan Lynch. What do you want to take away? And he said, we want to take away the run no matter who we're playing against. The thing that makes it tricky, though, is if you bring in a lot of guys in the box, they're going to pass it. There's Lynch to pass to the outside. That's complete. Jawan Breskison, who had the touchdown grab, shoved out by Truss. And that's where you get into that chess match as a defensive coordinator going against an offense is, hey, you try to disguise things. Don't let them see you're going to have eight or nine guys in the box. Try to hang your safeties deep, then bring them up late and run support. Substitutions prior to third and two. Time on the play clock. Stingley's in the backfield with Lynch.
Lynch keeps. Falcons were ready for him. Jarris Campbell, the senior nose tackle, makes the stop on Jordan Lynch. It is fourth down and one. And the offense is staying on the field for now. Not for long. Nope. <laughs> that was great penetration that time by Jarius Campbell and Ted Willett up front. That's the, one of the strengths of this Bowling Green defense is their interior. They don't really have a superstar on their defense, but their front seven, they've got a bunch of players who play, play really well and feed off of each other. And they lost Chris Jones, who's now a New England Patriot off of last year's team. Like the Huskies. Timeout prior to the snap. Timeout, Northern Illinois, their first, 30-second timeout. So on fourth and one, the Huskies will elect to punt and use a timeout in order to get that special teams unit out there. Saturday night football, the ACC Championship, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Florida State versus Duke. Jameis Winston and the Seminoles. It's Saturday night football, Dr. Pepper ACC championship game. And with yesterday's news that Jameis Winston will not be charged, there's no question that he is the front runner and maybe landslide winner in the, for the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, I mean, as much as you love Jordan Lynch, I think it's going to be a landslide. It's almost like you don't have to invite anybody else to New York. I think it's going to be that much in favor of Jameis Winston. He's just had a spectacular year, just was named the ACC Player of the Year. First time in the history of the ACC that a freshman has won that award. It's really had a spectacular uh, year and a reason why Florida State is playing a potential shot at the national championship. Tyler Weedle's punt yielded inside the 25. So Heismanology as we come down the final stretch. The ballots are due on Monday. Jordan Lynch right now second behind Jameis Winston. Andre Williams of BC. Braxton Miller of Ohio State. A.J. McCarron next in that picture but he's dropped off significantly after the loss to Auburn. Yeah and before yesterday at two o'clock when it was announced that there weren't going to be charges on Jameis Winston it was anybody's Heisman Trophy because you didn't know what was going to happen if Winston was charged of course I think he would have lost a ton of votes and then it was who was going to step up and tonight would have been a great opportunity for Jordan Lynch to maybe take a, a firm hold of that trophy. Do you think he goes to New York as I, a he, finalist? He deserves to I hope he does and I think he will be there in New York. Matt Johnson tucks it, feeling the pressure. Picks up about seven. The sophomore QB from Harrisburg, PA. Santa Catarina on the stop. Michael Santa Catarina, the junior outside linebacker for Northern Illinois, number seven. His cousin, Mike McGee, is named the MLS MVP. Plays for the Chicago Fire. More on the MLS later. Travis Green takes it on second and three, moves the chains across the 35. Jimmy Ward there on the stop. Hey, Bowling Green having a lot of success on offense versus this Northern Illinois defense. We talked about the struggles that Northern Illinois has had against the pass. They're 108th in the country giving up 264 yards a game. And when we talked to Jay Neiman, their defense coordinator, said, well, a lot of those stats are explained because Northern Illinois gets up on people, and late in the games, people are throwing the ball over the yard. But Bowling Green obviously has sensed a vulnerability in the past game as well. Field goal drive last time they had it. Travis Green again. Here's a look at some of the Northern Illinois ranks. And you can see, I mean, they're not exactly a dominant defense, and they've had some shootouts. They've had some come from behind games. And when they've got an offensive player, a weapon like Jordan Lynch, they can get away with that. team that leads the nation in time of possession. Complete first down again. Slipping away from the tackle. That's Ronnie Moore rolling inside the 40-yard line before Ward finally makes the stop. Right after you point out the vulnerabilities in the Northern Illinois pass defense. Ronnie Moore just got forgot about out in the flat. 
Watch him. Watch how much room. There's not a defender within 10 yards of him. Johnson gets in the ball, and then I tell you what, the couple times I've seen Ronnie Moore get the ball in his hands, this freshman's got some electricity about him. He can make some yards after the catch. Already 109 receiving yards for the freshman in the first quarter. 23-61, and now 25 on his three catches. Johnson, downfield, wide open, Ronnie Moore, touchdown. This one goes for 36. Back-to-back -back plays, Ronnie Moore was left wide open by the Husky defense. Second passing touchdown of the night for Matt Johnson, and the Huskies are in a hole in the MAC championship game again. And Northern Illinois just completely lost Ronnie Moore on that play. That's about the third time they've done so, and they need to start accounting for him. One hundred forty five receiving yards for Ronnie Moore in the first quarter. How about Ronnie Moore? He's lined up in the backfield. He's just going to run right up the middle of the field. Watch these safeties kind of go out. And then you've got a linebacker who's got to account for him. But a linebacker against the wide receiver, that's a matchup you want all day. And he basically is playing zone coverage, so he doesn't get any hand on him or anything. And Northern Illinois just completely busts that coverage right down the middle. That's as easy as touchdown as you'll get. <laughs> So two years ago, they were down 20 to nothing versus Ohio, came from behind and won. Last year versus Kent State, down 10 nothing. They won it in OT. That's what everybody was talking about, Kent State going to the BCS Bowl. Instead, Northern Illinois won the Marathon MAC Championship game a season ago, and it was the Huskies who win. And then Dave Dorn, uh, after that overtime win, next day accepted the NC State job. Rod Carey. Well, last year was the offensive line coach. Began last year as the offensive line coach that took over offensive coordinator position, now the head coach. Harris Logan out of the end zone for the Huskies. Out of bounds inside the 20. Ryan Ward shoves him out. How about the first quarter for Ronnie Moore. He has 156 yards of total offense. 145 through the air and an 11 yard rush for the true freshman from Sanford, Florida on just five touches. The thing I've noticed, they've lined him up a lot of different spots in the slot, outside, in the backfield. But Northern Illinois is gonna have to start accounting for Ronnie Moore. Jordan Lynch and the Huskies down by 10 in the first. Out of the backfield, James Spencer, the junior from Fremont, Ohio, to the 35 before Boo Boo Gates makes the stop. That is Jerry Gates from Middletown, Ohio, but since he was a little boy, he has been known as Boo Boo. And he will be tonight. Lynch, screen, Spencer again. Across the 50, James Spencer back-to-back -back grabs out of the backfield for the Huskies. Brian Thomas finally makes a stop. Great execution of the screen pass by Northern Illinois. Good timing, letting some offensive linemen get out in front of the back. It's number 55, Andrew Ness, 77, Jared Volk picking up a couple nice blocks. Good patient run out of the backfield, letting those blocks work. 35 yards for James Spencer on the last two plays. Lynch pulls it late and is dropped immediately by Brian Thomas for a loss. You saw him pull it, Carter, late. He might have been better giving that ball. And I'm not quite sure, you know, if you're not an offensive play caller, you don't know if he had that option. It sure looked like he was reading it. Might have been better served to give the ball to the back coming in motion across that play. Northern Illinois touchdown came on a Jordan Lynch pass. Running again on second and 12. Good. When he gets ahead of steam, you can see why Jordan Lynch is so tough to tackle. 
Cameron Truss, who's 5'10", 183, finally brings Lynch down. You've got to go low. Yeah, he gave him a pretty good pop there. Just getting enough of him. That's what you do with a dynamic runner. Take out his weapon there. Say, go for the legs. They don't want to take him up above because they'll get run over. Third in the nation in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. Lynch and the Huskies facing third down here. The throw. Caught right at the first down marker. Tommy Lee Lewis. First down, Northern Illinois. That's the one area of Jordan Lynch's game I think is underrated. I mean, that was a exceptional throw. He had to rip it out there to the outside and had to put it in such a tight window. That was covered on the outside, and yet he put it in the only place his receiver could catch it. That's a great throw and a great catch. First down, Huskies play action. Lynch rips it again. This one incomplete. It was intended for Preskison. Nine seconds left in the opening quarter. Oh, Breskison, I thought he might have had that one. It looked like a circus catch. He definitely caught it, but the question was, did he have a, did he get to drag a toe in Valley? He dropped it, trapped it. He you get some Northern Illinois has some weapons on the outside. They're still without Angelo Sebastiano. They dealt with a myriad of injuries in that receiving core. Play action, Lynch dumps it off. At Spencer spinning out of tackles on the final play of the first quarter. The Bowling Green Falcons trying to bust the BCS dreams of Northern Illinois. That's the end of the point first edge quarter. At the one. Honestly, I'm not looking. Dozens of Xbox One Entertainment Systems or millions of other prizes and leave a legend. Oh. ESPN College Football Primetime, Stanford, Arizona State, Saturday. Northern Illinois has done it the last two years, down early in the MAC championship game, and then a comeback to win it, including last year when they went to a BCS Bowl. They're trying to do it again tonight, down 17-7 as we begin the second quarter. This is third and nine for Jordan Lynch and the Huskies. Toss incomplete. Breskison had his head down. There is a flag down. Ineligible downfield. Offense number 79. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Well, the game plan for Bowling Green, you would have thought, was time of possession and long drives. That's what got the Falcons here. Instead, it has been big plays, 10-point yeah. lead. I think they'll trade a few minutes on the clock for a couple big plays and a couple touchdowns and a field goal in the first quarter. Matthew Sims lines up for a 51-yarder. He made a 51-yarder at Idaho indoors earlier this year. His career long is 54. Matthew Sims from 51. It is easily good. 51 yarder drilled by Matthew Sims. I mean, that's. That would have been good from 61. That Ooh. had a lot of clearance on it. Watch how far this goes by. I mean, that's clearing up the middle to upper portion of the goalpost. It's an impressive leg. Out of the 51 yarder at the Kibbe Dome has a 51 yarder at Ford Field. Right into those Allstate Nets, celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3.4 million in scholarship monies. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams from the Marathon MAC Championship game, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. What's he snacking on? That's a good question. <laughs> Gummies? Probably. Some of that goo that gives you that, that energy. Keeps you hydrated. Gatorade chews. Mm -hmm. Ronnie Moore from the goal line. Yeah. And I 
Give Ronnie Moore another touch across the 21. Jimmy Ward on the stop. Well, it's Marathon MAC Championship on Friday. Tomorrow, the Blue Devils and the Seminoles in the ACC. The Spartans and the Buckeyes in Indianapolis in the Big Ten with game day on hand. Act 12, the Sun Devils, the Stanford Cardinal. And in the SEC, the Tigers and the Tigers. Missouri and Auburn, who both had losing records a year ago, meet up for the SEC championship and maybe, just maybe, a trip to the BCS National Championship in Pasadena. Yep, they'll be rooting for Michigan State, no doubt. Travis Green on first down. Do you think it would be un-American <laughs> to not have an well, Jay, SEC team? Jay Jacobs, he challenged my patriotism with that comment that he made on SportsCenter this past Sunday. I do not. I'm in the camp that if you run the table and you play in an automatic qualifying conference, you deserve that chance to Pasadena because there is something special about going undefeated. And I know I'm not saying the Big Ten is, you know, the best conference in the country by any means, but when you run the table, it means something. And they still have a big test. That Michigan State defense ranked tops in the country. That'll prove some more worth for Ohio State if they do it. Matt Johnson on second and nine takes the sack. Jason Meehan on the stop. Our Vizio BCS standings in the top ten. So heading into the final weekend of the season, I mean, what, six? One through six, still a shot? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people are penciling in Florida State because they're such a heavy favorite against Duke, but you never know. I mean, the upsets have happened before. As we saw last weekend, I didn't think any of those rivalry games were going to be entertaining. And look at what you had. Some outstanding finishes. Auburn knocked off Alabama. Ohio State almost got beat by Michigan. They were a heavy favorite. A lot of those schools are watching tonight, rooting for Bowling Green, hoping that that opens up a BCS spot when Northern Illinois penciled in. Matt Johnson throws it away, fourth down coming. That was the first drive that I've seen Matt Johnson. There was no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the tackle box, threw the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. That was the first drive I've seen Matt Johnson, quarterback for Bowling Green, look uncomfortable. Northern Illinois dialed up some more pressure. They had the sack, which put him in a third and long situation. And then, of course, the pressure on third down to force the throw away. But a much, much better job up front by Northern Illinois creating some pressure. We remind you again that Bowling Green has not had a kick blocked all year. And they still have it. Brian Schmidebush, the senior punter from Ontario, hangs it high from Matt Williams. Down by seven now, Jordan Lynch and the Huskies. Early second. The Marathon MAC Championship from Ford Field in downtown Detroit, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams. Jordan Lynch, the fifth year senior from Chicago's Mount Carmel High School, where he ran the triple option. More diversified offense, but he is one of the nation's best rushers, third in the nation. Already a touchdown pass tonight. Handing off to Tommy Lou Lewis, breaks it outside. Remember the series before I said he might be better served to hand that ball off the guy coming in motion that was what happened right there watch Lewis come across Jordan Lynch gives it to him that time he's able to outflank the defense and pick up those extra yards in the secondary and that will open things up for Lynch in the middle because that'll start widening out that Bowling Green defense Spencer in the backfield now with Lynch Complete to the outside. Deep throw. How about the night Jordan Lynch has had? That was one of his latest big plays. How about here? It looks like a running back, right? He just takes it out, takes a pounding. Then he throws, showcases his arm strength on the outside. Another one where he hits it up in the middle. And how about this throw and the circus catch of Breskison on the outside? And now play action on first down. Lynch incomplete. Intended for Matt Williams again, who made that last grab for Northern Illinois. Missed opportunity for Northern Illinois. I felt that ball got away a little bit up high and behind. Lynch had a little bit of pressure in his face, but I think altered that throw. On 
second and ten. Fake the sweep. Lynch dropped immediately. That's Brian Sutton and Charlie Walker to force third down and nine for Northern Illinois. Last time the Huskies had the football, 51-yard field goal by Matthew Sims. This will be even deeper from here. It'll be 55. This is third and nine. Lynch on third and nine to the end zone. It's incomplete. Overshooting Matt Williams. And this time. Well, we'll see. Sims is back out there to try another one. Why wouldn't you? Showed plenty of room the last time. The 51 looked like it would have been good from much further, so why not? This is 45. My math was off a moment ago. 45-yard <laughs> attempt. Matthew Sims from 45. It's good. Oh, all this Heisman talk around Jordan Lynch. Hey, how about Matthew Sims? Booting it indoors. Huskies within four. Look at the two of you. What happened? The 2013 Marathon Mac Football Championship. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. And Warner Brothers Pictures Grudge Match in theaters Christmas Day. From Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. That was Henry Ford we saw at the beginning of these pictures. We we're at Ford Field in downtown Detroit for the 2013 Marathon Mac Championship, where the star has become Matthew Sims. Now, he has had some huge kicks here in this building. Two years ago, the game winner in the MAC championship game. Two years ago, it was the game winner two years ago versus Ohio. And then last year, he had a kick to send it to overtime against Kent State. And Sims has hit from 51 and 45 to close out the last two Husky drives. So an onside kick recovered by Northern Illinois, but there is a flag down. Oh, did they jump off sides? I don't, it'll be interesting because I didn't see an off sides and I thought the ball went to 10 yards. Dominique Ware with the recovery. That's going to be kick, catch, interference, I yeah, believe. Yeah, some contact before no, the play. Uh, uh, we'll get the call now. Now we'll get the call. There are two fouls against the kicking team. Offside, number 46. Illegal block. Blocking before the ball went 10 yards, 32. 10 yard penalty, re kick. So 46 offsides, and then the contact before it traveled 10 yards. I. 46 right next to him, which I didn't think it was George Rainey, was right next to the kicker. It didn't look to me like he was across. It looked like he timed it pretty well. You see him right next to the kicker. Dave Kataya joins us from the studio. Dave, what did you see on that play in those two penalty calls? The offsides call was very close, but remember, on the offsides call, when it's an onside kick, they're going to call that very close. Secondly, kickers cannot block the receiving team until they're eligible to touch the ball, which means, A, it goes 10 yards, or B, it's touched by the receivers. Those were the two fouls that were called on this play. Dave Kataya, our rules expert. So let's look at this again one more time. And again, the, so the ball's hit at the 35. It has to go 10 yards, meaning once it passes the 45, right there. Correction, the illegal block is 15-yard penalty, re-kick. 
Well, it definitely traveled 10 yards before the contact was made by Nate McNeil. Uh, but from what Dave said and what our officiating crew said, that's the penalty ruling that the contact happened before 10 yards. Clearly looked like it was 10 yards. Yes. It's also offsides, but the more consequential, I guess, the 15-yard penalty. And I think when the officials make this call, they err on the side of safety because this is one of those plays where they've tried to set up the rules so that the kick receiving team is protected so you don't have guys that are standing out there. But I felt like the 10-yard kick was there. I thought it was well executed. And a gutsy call by Rod Carey yeah. after, the, after the field goal to go onside kick. We're still sorting out where the football is going to be kicked off from. 15-yard penalty. Long time getting this one corrected. So 15-yard penalty. If it's a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the they're, foul, that would be at the 45, and your 15 is going to go back to the 30-yard line if it's from the spot of the foul. Well, I'm with you on Rod Carey because Bowling Green had no idea that was coming. That was a good time to call that onside kick. That sure looked like it went 10 yards, too, before the contact occurred. But there was also the offsides call. And now they kick it deep. Boo Boo Gates from the goal line. Gates bounces it outside, flag down. Gates wrestled down right around the 40-yard line by Tyler Weedle, the kicker. But there's a flag down all the way back at the 25. Holding receiving team number 33. 10-yard penalty, first down. So after the onside kick, because of the two penalties, comes back, it's Bowling Green football. Dave Kataya joins us again. Dave, can you add anything more to the discussion on those two flags? Well, again, that, that block, you can't block to your eligible touch the ball, but if you look at the video, it looks like the block occurs with the ball after it's gone 10 yards, so probably legal play. If the block is above the waist, it's only a five-yard penalty, which was enforced. If it's below the waist on any kick, it would be a 15-yard penalty. But in either case, they can choose one. They can choose the offside, or they can choose the illegal block. Even above the waist, it's illegal. Thank you, Dave. Validating what, uh, what we saw. Looked like that ball went 10 yards before that contact was made. Looked like clearly went 10 yards before the contact was made. A consequential call rather than Northern Illinois football, Bowling Green football. That's Heath Jackson who makes the catch. And after all of that, Falcon football with a four-point edge. That's 17 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. Bowling Green has not scored in the second. A pair of Husky field goals to begin the scoring in the second quarter. That's Travis Green, the nation's 10th leading rusher across the 30-yard line. BCS implications big time in Bedlam. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State presented by K Jewelers. This is noon. Eastern tomorrow on ABC, 9 a.m. Pacific time. How about Oklahoma State? You think they're kicking themselves? They lost to West Virginia. If they hadn't had that loss early in the season, they would be very much in the mix for that trip to Pasadena. Not quite as uh, consequential as two years ago when they lost the game Iowa uh, at Iowa State that yep. cost them a trip to the national championship with Brandon Wheaton. Now, if OU wins, then Texas Baylor becomes a Big 12 championship game. Last game at Baylor's Floyd Casey Stadium. Ball start. Offense number 65. Five yard penalty, first down. I think though, I think it is as consequential the loss to West Virginia as the Iowa State one because if they were undefeated at this point, they'd be right there. And I think they could, you know, when you talk about undefeated teams and if there were three of them, then that's when I think resumes matter, what your lens, wins look like. They do matter. I think that would, you know, 
Talk about the DCS. Isn't it appropriate that it goes away in a year like this with all this controversy? I'm glad to see it go. I think most people are. And off to Travis Green. Next year we'll go to a system for programs like the MAC, colleges like the MAC, where there will be an access bowl just automatically the highest ranks in the five uh, conferences or among the uh, five who don't have an automatic bid to the bowls will have access to one of the major bowls. For now, still the BCS. Northern Illinois trying to join Utah, Boise State, and TCU as teams to bust the BCS twice. But Bowling Green has the lead. Matt Johnson on second and 16. Flushed out, fires complete. Near the first down, that's Travis Green makes the grab, first and 10 Falcons. Pretty good job by Matt Johnson getting outside of the pocket. The question is, did that ball get caught? Northern Illinois coaches, as they should, they're right there. They're gonna try to get in the official's ear. It's like he did have possession. That's a catch and a first down. Of course, the Northern Illinois coaches are gonna make their case that he did not. So Travis Green was a wide receiver until spring ball, and in part because he had trouble making catches. They moved him to running back, where he is now the nation's 10th leading rusher. And you saw Green out of the backfield bobble that one, but finally haul it in for a first down. And now back to the ground for Travis Green. Brought down by George Rainey in the middle for Northern Illinois. So Travis Green, the sophomore, Carroll City, Florida. Averaging six yards a carry tonight. 4.4, 40 yards total. Play fake from Johnson. Kaker with a blocking, allowing him time to complete for the fifth year senior tight end, Alex Bear. Four years at tight end for the Falcons. Another one. I really like Matt Johnson. When he gets outside of the pocket, he's gonna he, outside of the pocket. He's an athletic quarterback. This one thrown back against the grain. Timing was a little bit off with Alex Bear. It was a little slow to get to his spot where he was trying to get to. But Johnson patiently surveyed the field and found his guy. Matt Johnson, the sophomore first year starter, nine for eleven now. A pair of touchdown passes. Travis Green on first down to the 30. So noon Eastern time tomorrow. An icy slate of games in the middle part of the country. Bedlam and then in Dallas and on to Houston with uh, ice and snow and nastiness expected, including it. A Conference USA Championship game. Marshall and Rice. The Owls have a chance at a conference championship for the first time since 1957 when they won the Southwest Conference Championship under head coach Jess Neal. Matt Johnson to the outside. Complete first down. They'll have to do it against Rakeem Cato. Yeah, one of the top quarterbacks in the country. He's put up some big stats this year. I'll tell you who's impressing me right now, though, is Matt Johnson. Really looks comfortable. He's found a rhythm. putting up some big numbers, a lot of them to Ronnie Moore, but now he's starting to spread the football around. And it's really by necessity. When you look at Northern Illinois, they are ex uh, exposing a secondary that has struggled all year long. Johnson checks to the sideline on first and 10. Play fit. To the end zone. Touchdown, another wide open receiver. This time it's Heath Jackson on the third touchdown pass for Matt Johnson.
Third touchdown pass in the second time. Northern Illinois has left a wide open receiver down the middle for a touchdown. Another busted coverage. Jimmy Ward, the safety that time, jumped up on an inside route, let a defender get behind him. Bowling Green jumps out to an 11 point lead over Northern Illinois. How about the route on the outside? Watch Jimmy. Jimmy Ward on the inside. He jumps up. Matt Johnson says, I'll take that easy touchdown. He likes it. Matt Johnson, the sophomore from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Bishop McDevitt High School. He is listed six foot. Maybe a shade under six foot. So the scholarship offers were not flowing in for a guy who's under six foot, despite some really good numbers in high school. But Bowling Green offered, and here he is in the MAC championship, trying to deliver a MAC championship to the Falcons for the first time since '92. Three touchdown passes. He's 11 for 13. And he's outplaying the Heisman candidate. I mean, he's outplaying Jordan Lynch to this point in this game, and now it's trading punches. Jordan Lynch gets his opportunity to strike back. Johnson was five for five on that last drive. Touchback, Huskies from the 25. College game day built by the Home Depot down the road in Indianapolis. Saturday morning, tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN, including profile of David Cutcliffe, rising the Blue Devils, ACC championship. Hashtag Friday focus from chilly Indianapolis, Indiana, where they'll be playing indoors Urban Meyer, the former Bowling Green head coach against Antonio and Michigan State. Yes, saw the set of college football live today. There was a little snow in the background. It was some good football weather. I don't know if they're going to be loving that, though, the crew. <laughs> First down, handoff, Stingley. Got to warm up with some of that uh, cocktail sauce from St. Elmo's. Yeah, that you, that's right. That'll, that'll get do you it. warmed up. Clear the sinuses out for sure. I had some earlier this week, actually, for a basketball game at, at Purdue. I didn't bring you any. <laughs> it's a big drive right here for Northern Illinois to stay, you know, to go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to keep matching scores. Lynch heaving long, batted away. Aaron Foster there in coverage to knock it away. You saw it. Aaron Foster was riding stride for stride with Luke Ekes. Down the field, Jordan Lynch took a shot, but that was covered extremely well by Foster. Offhand there, batting, trying to bat the ball away. Great coverage. That's been a difference. I mean, Northern Illinois defensively has not covered. There have been way too many easy touchdowns. Bowling Green's making it tough. Tommy Lee Harris on third and three dives for the first down marker, and from that spot, he appears to have it. Boy, how about the field awareness? Seeing those sticks, realizing where he had to get the first down and stretching out and putting the ball past it. Gotta love seeing a receiver who knows the situation, knows he's gotta stretch that ball out there for the first down. Lewis picks it up, first and 10 Huskies. Incomplete, off the hands of Lewis on the outside. Well, for Northern Illinois, it was start fast, start fast, start fast. Not like the last two MAC championship games. I mean, this is a Husky team with a win tonight. They're all but certain to go to a BCS Bowl, most likely the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Well, they started fast offensively. Defensively, they have just struggled. Lynch pumps, pressured, incomplete. It's going to be third down and 10. I mean, the Huskies said all week long, building up to this Marathon MAC championship, the emphasis was on getting off to a fast start. They trailed by 10 at the end of one. Now they're down by 11 in the second. But they have won both of those last MAC championship games in which they trailed. Jordan Lynch, only two for his last nine. Out of the pocket. Reverses, tosses complete. Spencer on the check down, picks up the first down. Lynch eludes the pressure and keeps the play alive for Spencer. 
Outstanding job by Jordan Lynch. There was a lot of time that he bought in the backfield. How about him? He's surveying the field, scrambles to the right, realizes nothing's there, switches back against the grain, finds Spencer out there who has a lot of room to run and picks up the first down. Well, that's tough for a defensive defend, too. They've got to try to cover guys for that long. Lynch keeps it on first down. We check in with Allison Williams. Well, Carter, you guys were talking about how Northern Illinois got off to slow starts the last few years in this MAC championship game, and they're talking about that on the sideline, especially amongst the defensive guys. They're saying this is three years in a row. We cannot be playing like this early. And linebacker coach Kevin Kane told his guys, you cannot be spotting them these points in the championship game. Well, it's too late now. They've already given them 24. They need to pick it up in a hurry. Lynch flings complete to the outside. Aaron Foster on the stop. Matt Williams makes the catch. The thing is, they've just given way too many easy touchdowns to Bowling Green. Officials time off for player injury. That's Boo Boo Gates. The senior safety who has 57 tackles and a pair of INTs. One of the leaders of the Bowling Green defense who's down on the field right now. Dave Clawson coming all the way out to check on his safety. He realizes the importance, but good to see Boo Boo Gates not only walk, but run off the field. And yes, the Bowling Green fans are saying boo. <laughs> right. Not boo Werns. Boo boo. Josh Pettis, the senior who's from Detroit, and it's safety to replace Boo Boo Gates. Play action, Lynch, deep. Knocked away incomplete. Aaron Foster knocks another one away. He has been terrific in coverage for the Falcons. Yes, he has. Aaron Foster lined up on the outside, but saw that ball come in to the inside and fell off of his receiver and just made a play on the football. He's covering the outside receiver, but comes inside to the slot and breaks up that pass. That's two nice pass breakups for Aaron Foster. He's a physical corner because he's moved from safety. Senior from Bloomfield, Michigan. Get physical on the screen as well. DJ Lynch stops Tommy Lee Lewis. And this is the Bowling Green defense we told you about from the get-go. Yeah, and if you're gonna run a little screen on the outside, you better not have a wide receiver trying to block a linebacker, and that's exactly what happened. DJ Lynch just said, get off me, and made him come up and made a play. Forcing third and long. On the deep out, off the hands of Matt Williams, Aaron Foster there again. See Matthew Sims again, who's been the star so far for Northern Illinois. Offensively, going to try another extremely long field goal. This guy's got a this guy's got a huge leg, and it's going to get a workout right now. A 58-yard attempt coming from Matthew Sims. He hit from 51 earlier with ease. 58-yard field goal attempt. No good. An 11-point Bowling Green lead. The Falcons trying to bust the BCS Busting Huskies. Hello. It's education beyond the classroom. In the U.S. Army Reserve, you'll find the strength to develop new skills and gain an edge to get ahead. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. Visit GoArmy.com slash reserve. Only Green had a really good run when Urban Meyer was their coach. They won 17 games in two years. But they have not won a MAC championship since 1992. They've been in the MAC, the Mid American Conference, since 1952. 
They've won it 10 times, and not in 21 years. Good field position after the 58-yard miss for Northern Illinois. So Matt Johnson and the Falcons, high snap, handoff green, nothing there. We check in with Chris Cotter. Carter coming up at the half mark. May Coach Holtz will join me. We'll look ahead to Saturday and what could be a Heisman Trophy coronation for Jameis Winston. It is championship Saturday, so we'll take a look at all the games, including a, a game in the Big 12 that isn't a championship game, but might lead to the Big 12 championship. Plus, we're going to pay a visit to that game day snow globe out in Indianapolis. That's all coming up at the half. Lou Holtz, a uh, alum of a Max School as well. Kent State. Play action complete. That's Burbrink. There is a flag down. A couple flags out in the field. One, I think, definitely is going to be holding. Time off for player injury. A man downfield, too. There were a lot of offensive linemen down the field as well. Still awaiting the word on the flag. There are two fouls against the offense. Ineligible downfield, number 52. That penalty's declined. Holding. Offense number 67. Ten-yard penalty. Second down. Now Chris Cotter mentioned what is perhaps a Heisman coronation for Jameis Winston. ACC Championship game Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. A Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. If Duke somehow pulls it off, it'll be their first conference championship since 1989 under Steve Spurrier. Yeah, Dave Brown is on that team. Dude, uh, David Cutcliffe has had an exceptional year. I mean, what he's done, back-to-back bowl -back seasons. He had a great year last season, built on it. He's really building something special there in Durham. Feature on game day tomorrow. Second and long, Travis Green. The sophomore shakes his way. Fumble, loose ball. Who has it? Awaiting the signal. There it is. Northern Illinois football. And Jimmy Ward, who got beat for the touchdown, the safety for Northern Illinois. Came up with the big strip. He's their ball hawk. He's one of their impact players. Right there, comes up, gets a piece of that ball. It pops in the air, and then it's a scrum. There are a lot of black jerseys there. And that's only the fourth fumble lost this season by Bowling Green. And it comes at a, at a bad time, because now Northern Illinois, with the plenty of time to cut into this deficit. The comeback Huskies, minute 22 left in the half. Lynch trying to set up a screen, almost intercepted. DJ Lynch, both hands on it, and he might have gone the distance. Man, Bowling Green is all over these short screen, slip screen passes. And once the timing is off, saw Jordan Lynch there, it's a little bit high, the ball is up, and I'll tell you what, DJ Lynch, had a chance for six the other way if he reels that in. He will have nightmares about that one tonight. Back to the ground. Tommy Lee Lewis. Lynch forces him out. Third down, minute 10. The one thing, because I've watched Northern Illinois several times. They play on the Tuesday, Wednesday night matchups. The one thing I've noticed is they get a lot of big plays from poor tackling. Bowling Green is doing a great job bringing down the, the weapons that they've got in the outside. They're making great open field tackles, which is preventing those big plays. On third and six, batted, and now it is intercepted. Picked off, Ted Uled hauls it in. Just the sixth INT thrown this year by Jordan Lynch, and the Falcons get it back with a minute five. Ted Ouellette, the big defensive tackle. Gets a big mid on it. 
comes down to him. Actually, Brian Sutton had the bat, and Ouellette brings it back. Here he is right here, Ouellette. Watch number three get up, show some hops, and it bounces right into 93's arms. That's a big turnover right back to back. A couple turnovers right back to Bowling Green. Falcon football right in midfield. Fling to the outside complete. That's Heath Jackson. Just the sixth INT thrown this year by Jordan Lynch. That's his first and his last 135 attempts for Jordan Lynch. And really wasn't any fault of his. You can't really do anything. <laughs> Defender jumps up and bats it around. Matt Johnson. Slant. Complete first down. That's Jackson again. Clock stops temporarily as the chains are moved inside the 40. Two timeouts left for Bowling Green. Rolling now to 55. Johnson pumps. Heaves long. Incomplete. Intended for Joplin, who got tangled up with Sean Evans. The fifth year senior corner. Yeah, they were running stride for stride. I feel like their legs just got caught up. Sean Evans tripped, and then we saw Joplin trip going for the ball. Really just incidental contact there on the outside. But I like the fact you're taking a shot if you're Matt Johnson. The way this Northern Illinois secondary has struggled, why not give a shot towards the end zone? Just the third completion of the game for Matt Johnson. Pressure coming. Johnson eludes. Gets out of bounds to make it third down with 40 seconds left. Bowling Green is facing third down for just the third time tonight. The Falcons are 0 for 2 on third down. Talk about an odd number. They're up 11 on the 14th ranked team in the country, and they haven't converted a third down yet. It's been the big plays for Bowling Green. On third mid, pressure. Johnson delivers to the outside. First down. That's Bear. Gets out of bounds with 35 seconds. Big third down, not only because they get to keep the chains, but now they're into field goal range. Just out flanks, gets to the outside of that defense. Bear gets it in, then gets out of bounds. And he really gets to get a pick by the, the route runner. You get those guys crossing in man-to-man -man coverage, and they're trying to chase after one another. First and 10 from the 26. Johnson, he has room to run. And now Matt Johnson stays inbounds inside the 20-yard line. Timeout. Dave Clawson sprints onto the field to call one of his two remaining timeouts. 23 seconds left. Anthony Wells makes that stop. 23 seconds remaining in this first half. Bowling Green now appears to be in field goal range. So a fast start. They were up 10 in the first quarter. An 11-point lead right now, and when we talk about this BCS picture, I mean, uh, there's still a lot of scenarios out there. We know this about this game. If Northern Illinois wins, they're all but certain a BCS spot. They're in the top 16. They could even get to 12 where they automatically go to a BCS game. But if Bowling Green wins, it adds to the BCS chaos in the final weekend. Well, not only does it add to the chaos because of some of the teams that would be eligible to go to, say, the Fiesta Bowl with that spot opening up, but it's a very interesting problem for the MAC to have because they're looking, if Northern Illinois wins this game, they're looking at an $8 million windfall for the conference. If Northern Illinois loses this game and Bowling Green wins, they lose out on that payday because Bowling Green would not go to a BCS Bowl. So it's a very interesting dynamic, kind of a weird one, you know, when you're looking at the picture for the conference. It'll be an additional roughly $8 million to the conference with that BCS bid. 
Second and three complete, first down. Bear gets out of bounds, 17 seconds left in the half. The most likely benefactor from a Bowling Green win would be a Big 12 school, but again, there's a, there's a so lot good. still ahead on Saturday. A lot of different scenarios could play out. Seventeen seconds, first down. Johnson, touchdown! Bear open in the end zone. Bowling Green takes the Jordan Lynch interception and turns it into a touchdown at the end of the first half. How about the fast, the first half that Matt Johnson, Bowling Green's quarterback, has had? 294 yards in the first half alone and four touchdowns. Tate's PAT makes this a 31-13 lead for Bowling Green, the largest deficit of the season for the 14th ranked Huskies. They trail by 18 just prior to half in Detroit. Coming in talking to this game, we were talking about Jordan Lynch, but we've been talking mostly about Matt Johnson for the first half he's had. Here he is, first drive of the game, gets outside of the pocket, flips it out, nice easy pass to his tight end. Some of these plays have been pretty easy. Here he is scrambling around under pressure, keeps his eyes downfield to find Bonnie Moore wide open. Here's another one down the field, another Northern Illinois busted coverage, and then this one to his tight end. Alex Bear rifles it over the middle. And Matt Johnson, a career high, four touchdown passes, and he still has a half to play on the biggest stage of his career, too, when you're talking about a MAC championship at the line to four different guys. So spreading the wealth around is Matt Johnson. For Jordan Lynch, down by 18, the Huskies 13 seconds to go. Lynch needs a big second half if the Huskies are going to come back and go to a BCS Bowl. Lynch may need a big second half if he's going to go to New York as a Heisman Trophy finalist. Yeah, because he's definitely, I mean, there are, there are no sure things aside from Jameis Winston as far as who's going to go. And you want to go out with a strong impression. So he's going to need a big second half. I agree with you, Carter. Touchback for the Huskies, 13 seconds. What a crazy two minutes to the end of this half. So a couple turnovers, get it back. And then Bowling Green with the very opportunistic touchdown off the Jordan Lynch interception. I mean, for a second there, you thought Northern Illinois was going to have a chance to go cut into this lead. All of a sudden, Bowling Green extended this. Northern Illinois is going to have their hands full in the second half. They run it. Well, they're going to take it into half and regroup. The game was 17-13 Bowling Green when Northern Illinois had an onside Second kick. Second timeout, Northern Illinois, 32nd timeout. I thought they were going to take it in and regroup. <laughs> Not sure why Northern Illinois takes a timeout there. I have no idea either. I'm trying to figure it out for the life of me. Set up the hook Let's, and ladder, yeah, maybe. Maybe a try Hail Mary, some sort of prayer. Hmm. Rod Carey went onside kick after the 17 to 13. The field goal cut it to 17 to 13. Two penalties were called, one of which we clearly decided should not have been called. The other was offsides. Yeah, that, that onside kick was really a turning point. Northern Illinois had created some momentum. I thought they should have had the ball going in. Instead, Bowling Green gets it back, and it's been all Bowling Green since that point. Sure enough, Lynch to the outside. That's caught. Three seconds. So now remember now, the Huskies. Uh, another timeout. And now they'll set up a, a chance for that. I can understand why they tried to call a play there, because it, the first down play didn't make sense to me. Running it, it looked like they were going to run out the clock. Third and final timeout. But now Northern they've got Illinois. a chance. 
30-second penalty. Now they've got a chance for a Hail Mary at the end zone, and potentially, don't forget about the leg that Matthew Sims had. Had to slip to tackle there, they could have possibly got another few yards and gotten out of bounds. Dave Clawson shaking his head. By the way, Dave Clawson, there have been uh, numerous reports that Dave Clawson is interested in the Wake Forest head coaching vacancy. We asked Dave Clawson last night when we met with him about the Wake Forest job. He said about his future in coaching, we're focused on winning the MAC championship. And that was Clawson's only comment on you know, the potential future in coaching, but he has been a program builder every step along the way. Fordham, Richmond, now Bowling Green. Two years ago, they played with 46 scholarship players. 46 at Bowling Green. And has built them all the way back into a division champion. An 18 point lead right now on Northern Illinois. And that was the end of the half. With a whimper for Jordan Lynch and the Huskies. Bowling Green 7 0 when leading at the half. Jordan Lynch and the Huskies face their biggest deficit of the season down by 18 at the half. Here's Allison Williams. Coach, you emphasized all week getting off to a strong start. Why wasn't that the case tonight? Well, they're a good team. I mean, you know, they made some plays we didn't, and so now we're in this situation. What were the plays that you didn't make? Well, you know, we got the turnover, and then we turned it right back over that game, the touchdown. And then some other ones early didn't convert on third down, although right away we did, and then later we kind of gave them a little bit. What was the explanation you received for the penalty on the onside kick? Not a good one, I'll tell you that. Did they did they explain it at all to you, or what did they tell yeah, you? Yeah, they called offsides, which it wasn't, and then they called and we blocked before the 10 yards, and it wasn't. So those two. Thank you very much, yeah. Coach. Understandably, Rod Carey frustrated. His Huskies are down by 18 at the break. A huge half from Matt Johnson and the Bowling Green Falcons. We send you on to Chris, Mark, and Lou. Thank you, Carter. Halftime report. Mark May, Coach Holtz, Chris Cotter here with you. And Coach, you know, of course, all eyes going into this game on Jordan Lynch, but he hasn't really carried this team like we've seen him in, in the past. No, it doesn't look like the same Northern Illinois team. However, as great a quarterback as Jordan Lynch has been, as good a offensive statistics he's compiled this year. I think you have to wait and evaluate him the entire game. He's a strong runner. He's a physical runner, but I was telling Mark May before the game started, Bowling Green's a very good defensive football team, particularly against the run. And uh, their offense has been absolutely outstanding. Jordan Lynch he just had trouble. Jordan Lewis wants his ticket much New York for the Heisman. He's going to have to have one heck of a second half because he's being upfield right now by Matt Johnson. Matt Johnson looks like the Heisman Trophy contender the way he's played in the first half. He's only missed three passes out of 19 attempts, four touchdown passes, no turnovers. This is what I like about him. Very mobile, makes great decisions when rolling out of the pocket. He's got great receivers and tight ends to get the football to. And Dave Clawson, the head coach of Bowling Green, is coming to this game with one heck of an offensive game. Plan. Last time Northern Illinois was had this big of a halftime deficit, 2011 against Ohio, they did come back and win that game, though, in the second half. So uh, all bets are off still right now. Got to talk about Jameis Winston because the news yesterday, obviously coming down from Tallahassee, State Attorney Willie Meggs said there was just not enough evidence to move forward. Uh, with uh, the investigation against Jameis Winston. So no charges will be filed. Now he gets to take on Duke in the ACC championship game. That on Saturday night on ABC. So uh, it's, it's almost hard to believe, as composed as he has been, Mark, that he could be even better with this weight lifted off his shoulders. Do you think that's possible? I think it's possible because he doesn't have that pressure now, the off-field situation. And I think you're looking at a young man as a redshirt first. Man. Ship for life since 1946. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Jimmy V Week continues for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. From Ford Field in downtown Detroit, the 2013 Marathon MAC Championship, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week, an 18-point edge for the Bowling Green Falcons on 14th ranked Northern Illinois. With Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, I'm Carter Blackburn. Welcome back to Ford Field in downtown Detroit. So Danny, when you look at Northern Illinois, what gives you more pause? Jordan Lynch's performance in the first half 
or the Northern Illinois defense's performance in the first half? It's a really good question. I wasn't very impressed with either one. I think Jordan Lynch, I have more confidence he'll be able to bounce back. He's played from behind before. He's been in this situation. The defense, which has struggled all year long against the pass, made it way too easy for Matt Johnson and Bowling Green's offense. They just handed them too many wide open touchdowns. They're gonna have to make some adjustments. They did a couple times get some pressure on Johnson in the backfield, and they're gonna have to do that a lot more in the second half. But you talk about a guy in Jordan Lynch who's you know had a Heisman campaign type of season. I feel like he'll keep Northern Illinois in this game. Jordan Lynch in Northern Illinois won the toss, deferred. So they would get it in the second half from the goal line. Logan across the 25 Logan to the 35 now one of the key calls in this game the onside kick two penalties called Dave Kataya joins us again we looked at it throughout halftime Dave what did you see all right there's a third uh, there's a third component to this remember the NC2A rules were changed to say if a kick is driven directly into the ground and bounces on one bounce the receivers have an opportunity to catch the kick. You can see the kicker on this play blocks that person in position after the ball bounces once. That is kick catch interference. That would have been the correct call, and that's a 15 yard penalty. Instead, there was an offside called, and then an, an additional 15 yard penalty for contact prior to 10 yards when it appeared that ball clearly was past 10 yards. What did you think of the offsides, Dave? The offside, the offsides is quite close. Okay, look at the guy, the kicker, just to the left of the guy kicking the ball. His shoulder is beyond the ball, and when there's an onside kick, and that any part of that body is beyond that ball, it's gonna be called every single time. So, based on the stop action, that was the correct call, but the real the correct call of this whole thing is the 15-yard kick catch interference penalty that was not called. Dave, thank you very much, and that's immediately on that kickoff we said kick catch interference because, again, that's even on the bounce, you have to allow that kicking team to receive the kick. Yeah, the offsides I felt was very close. I think it caught either way. We got a penalty right here. This one's a little bit easier. Yeah. The reason why we keep going back to that onside kick. Following the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 43, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The game was 17-13. It would have been Northern Illinois football, but two penalties called, both of them question marks. And that was a momentum-changing onside kick that came back. Here's a look at the last one. You see 43. Brian Thomas just yanked the Northern Illinois player. And that's why Dave Clawson was having a few words with his defensive lineman. Lynch on first and 10. Rolling out of bounds right around the 20-yard line. Ward finally forces him out. Ekus leads the way for Jordan Lynch. And we didn't see, we only saw maybe one or two plays of that magnitude on the ground from Jordan Lynch. He was contained for the most part. Here's a 16-yard gain from there, and a stiff arm at the end does not go down. And they're going to need a lot more plays like that from number six. Longest rush of the game for Jordan Lynch. The Heisman contender. Dives forward, even bottled up. Lynch gets four, almost five on first down. The nation's third leading rusher. Second down, five. Largest deficit of the season for Northern Illinois. Down by 18 at the break. Last two years, they've come from behind to win Marathon Mac Championship games here in Detroit. Slant caught. Breskison. First and goal, Huskies. When Bowling Green is doing an outstanding job getting the flat defenders underneath those passing lanes. That ball was almost tipped. Watch defensive end Charlie Walker, 46. He's dropping right there, gets a, a finger on that football. And Lynch is going to have to start being careful, throwing some of those short range outside passes. One critical interception in the first half for Lynch, just the sixth he's thrown this year. Take the sweep. Touchdown, Jordan Lynch. Takes a defender into the end zone who spins him down. Ryland Ward 
tosses Lynch down once he's crossed the goal line. There is no flag thrown on Ryland Ward. But it's a touchdown to get the second half started for Jordan Lynch and the Huskies. You asked me, Carter, right before half, the second half started, you know, what did I feel better about? And that's why I feel better about Northern Illinois offensively, because they've got that guy right there who basically put the team on his shoulders on that drive. Breaking the FBS record for rushing yards in a season by a quarterback. First rushing touchdown of the night for Jordan Lynch. Matthew Sims boots it through. 11-point game again. That's Jim Lynch, Jordan's dad. Fired up about the Husky TD. Jordan Lynch is getting a couple pulling guys, a tight end. Trap coming across and then just dips his shoulder down. And right there, that last Rylan Ward with that last throwing Lynch down. I thought it could have been called for a penalty. Look at Lynch's parents, they like it. Jim and Sheila, the Lynch family, the Huskies, all celebrate. A quick strike touchdown for Jordan Lynch, aided by a 15-yard penalty. And that was exactly what Northern Illinois needed to do to get back in this game. Now, the biggest question mark for me in this second half is, is their defense going to be able to shore things up and prevent the Bowling Green offense from putting up such big numbers? Matt Johnson, 294, four touchdowns in the first half. Riedel's kickoff. More touchback. Falcons get it at the 25. We check in with Michigan's own Allison Williams. Yes, Carter, and I talked to Bowling Green's Dave Clawson at the half about what worked for his offense, and he said we threw effectively, we protected well, but we need to get more push in our run game. We cannot be so one-dimensional in the second half. And, guys, you better know, he made a point to remind his team there is a lot of football left. He wants to make sure that they are physical in this second half. Also, defensively, it was interesting. He didn't think they defended Jordan Lynch and NIU well. He said he still, they still were able to make too many plays. We have to do a better job tackling him. He is their weapon. And an opening drop touchdown for Lynch. First rushing touchdown against Dave Clawson's Falcons. Graduate of Williams. Play for over the middle, caught. There's Bear rolling through the Husky defense again. Northern Illinois out of the half gives up another huge play to Matt Johnson, Alex Bear, and the Falcons. Boy, the big play offense for Bowling Green continues to roll right where it left off. Matt Johnson has the hot hand. Here's the tight end, just going to run vertical up the field. Watch him release outside the linebacker, stutters a second, but gets behind that linebacker level. And then number one's got to come up there. Durant's got to make a tackle. You can't let him get those extra 20 yards. Make the play. A 44-yard gain from Johnson to Alex Bear. Back to the ground game. Travis Green driven back after a gain of only a couple. That's Jimmy Ward, the strong safety on the stop. But, I mean, Danny, right out of halftime, when Northern Illinois had been torched by the big play from Bowling Green, they give up another one. More of the same, too. They've really been vulnerable over the middle part of the field. And they're splitting their safeties out wide, and that middle of the field space has been wide open and they've left these linebackers on receivers and athletic tight ends and they're really struggling in pass coverage. The last four completions have all gone to Alex Bear. 72 yards and a TD. Still holds true. That one's dropped by Ronnie Moore making it third down and seven. First possession of the third quarter for the Falcons. And Northern Illinois' offense did their part. Now is a big play on them for a third down and seven to force a field goal attempt and get their offense back on the field. Only the fourth third down the Falcons have faced. They've scored 31 points on one third down conversion. Blitz. Johnson. 
completes inside the 15. Johnson throws it up. Joplin hauls it in, and the Falcons convert. Boy, and Matt Johnson just kept retreating. They bought the blitz and just threw it up for grabs to Sean Joplin. Sean Evans, the safety, comes up and tries to make a play on it. There's the pressure. And this is just a jump ball. Joplin comes back and gets it. And Sean Evans can't make a play. So a huge conversion for Bowling Green. First and 10 inside the Northern Illinois 15. Play clock to five. Green. To the 10. Rainey on the stop. Four touchdown passes in the first half for the sophomore QB, Matt Johnson. Giving him 22 on the year, so 18 touchdowns during the regular season. A career high, four touchdowns in the first half for the listed six-foot quarterback, Matt Johnson. That ties the Mac championship game record. Keeper. Will be third down for Bowling Green. Now you got to give credit to Bowling Green, too. This offensive game plan that Dave Clawson has put together. I mean, they have masterfully played this game as far as keeping for Northern Illinois off balance, taking the shots from there, there, coming up with great play calls that have really aided Matt Johnson, getting him outside the pocket at the opportune moments, taking their shots when they're there. Warren, Warren Ruggiero, their offensive coordinator. Outstanding job with the play calls. Here comes a critical one right here. Third and five from the eight. Johnson, incomplete. Was looking once again for Alex Bear, the fifth year senior tight end. It's a little tougher when you get a couple defenders around him. I mean, that's one thing. I mean, you got to get some bodies around Bear and the other receivers. And Northern Illinois finally gets a stop. And I think forcing Bowling Green to a field goal on this drive is a victory for Northern Illinois in this second half. So, and again, they attacked that middle part of the field. They went for that middle again. It's better defense when the defenders are running with a wide <laughs> yeah. open guy. All I right. would say so. Lesson learned. <laughs> Tyler Tate, sophomore kicker from 26. Made from 26 in the first half. Another long drive. This one is no good. Tyler Tate misses from 26. So the Bowling Green drive goes 67 yards, no points. Husky football. Football lives here. Visit watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Jordan Lynch and the 14th ranked Huskies react to the 26 yard miss by Tyler Tate. He had made his last seven kicks before missing from 26. Still an 11 point lead. He saw himself on the uh, jumbo trying to give a smile. Good reaction, Tyler. Lynch first down. Pushes for four, maybe five more. I think it's interesting, and Northern Illinois has been in this situation before. They've got a leader, a veteran, a quarterback. No sense of panic out of them. And we talked a lot in the first half about them being down 20 to nothing, 10 to nothing. They've faced deficits. They've faced deficits all season long this year. They're very used to playing in this type of situation. Reskison in motion. Lynch fakes the sweep, keeps. Eludes the tacklers, takes two of them to bring him down after another first down for Lynch. And there's a look at how what they've had to deal with this season, some of the deficits they'd have to overcome to come back from. Of course, Iowa was the big win against the Big Ten. They went 2-0 and the, against the Big Ten this year. Northern Illinois did. Northern Illinois has as many Big Ten wins in a moment. For Stingley across midfield, Stingley to the 46. Cameron Stingley 
breaks the first big one of the night. And I'll tell you what, Northern Illinois, before the half, really looked deflated. They didn't get the call they wanted on the onside kick, but they have come out with a lot of energy this second half on these first two drives, setting the tone of a lot of scrimmage. Huskies hurry up, same play. Right back to Stingley up the middle of the 40. Finish that thought from a moment ago. Northern Illinois has as many Big Ten wins, two of them, as Illinois, Northwestern, and Purdue combined. Straight ahead. Well, Stingley, who was quiet in the first half, is woken up. Mm -hmm. Sticking his shoulder down, driving back some Bowling Green defenders. What a power run that was right there. Just dragged a couple linebackers and safeties along at the end of that run. Stingley had only 17 rushing yards in the first half. Lynch fakes it. The Falcons went with him, and Brian Sutton and Aaron Foster bring him down after a gain of maybe two. Opening drive of the third quarter, Jordan Lynch, a 50 year senior from Chicago, led a touchdown drive, his first rushing touchdown of the night. Pressure coming. Lynch pumps, throws deep. It is incomplete. Breskison nearly made another terrific catch. Boy, Breskison had the one-handed touchdown grab. You were talking about Carter. Boy, if I'm Jordan Lynch, I'm giving him a chance, too. Throws it up high where only he can get it. Catches it when he comes down with the football. That leg was out of bounds, because I think he had the catch, but that left foot there when it comes down, out of bounds. And Breskison is a special weapon on the outside. Man, he's got some great hands, and he's a big target at 6'4", 220 pounds. Brings up third and eight. The Huskies are in field goal range. Lynch. So perhaps on third and eight, thinking field goal range, Lynch keeps, but he's perfectly capable of breaking it on third and eight as well. And now here's the field goal unit coming on, Matthew Sims. Matthew Sims, who was one of their biggest weapons in the first half, showed plenty of leg. He made from 51 and 45, missed the 58 yarder. Had the length, though, really, on the 58. Just missed it to the left. This attempt is from 44. Sims looked like it was touched. The field goal is no good. Brian Thomas may have gotten a hand on it to block the 44-yarder from Matthew Sims. Look at Sims. He missed his kick. Dave Clawson likes it. 11 up. lead. By Nissan, December 14th at 8 on ESPN. The 2013 Marathon Mac Football Championship. Brought to you by Buick. Visit your local Buick dealer to see why thousands of people are switching to Buick each month. And Walmart. Buy with confidence with their new Christmas ad match. Bowling Green hasn't won a MAC trophy since 1992, yet they lead by 11 against 14th ranked Northern Illinois. If Jordan Lynch and the Huskies can come back again in Detroit and win it, it means almost certainly a birth in a BCS game, likely the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Flag down on the play. Green picks up a few. I mean, you figure if Lynch leads this comeback, Back championship, BCS, possibly wrapping up the trip to New York as a Heisman finalist, if the Huskies can come back. It's a big if at this point, too. Offside, defense number 99, five-yard penalty, first down. So, of course, the question for Northern Illinois, will their name be called on Sunday night, 8.30 Eastern? It is the Vizio BCS selection show. 
They have uh, reached the number 14 mark. That is in the top 16 ahead of an automatic qualifying conference because UCF has clinched a BCS berth out of the American. That's the old Big East's automatic bid to the BCS. All of this complicated formula and scenario, it goes away after this year. Green on first and five, moving the chains to the 43-yard line. So here's 10 through 17. And again, if Northern Illinois can get to 12, then they're automatically in the BCS. They're two spots ahead of Central Florida. The polls that make up two-thirds of the BCS standings, I mean, they, the pollsters can still bump Northern Illinois down or move Central Florida up. I don't think that'll be the case. I'm more interested when I look at the polls and the impact they could have is on the BCS title game. When I look at what some conferences could do to a potential undefeated Ohio State or Florida State, put them much lower to try to get that one loss SEC team in. Johnson off play action. Matt Johnson flings complete outside. Bears left open again. And the tight end delivers a blow to Jimmy Ward after he picks up the first down. Carter, how many times tonight have we seen a Bowling Green receiver and there hasn't been a defender anywhere in the vicinity? Alex Bear this time on the left side, the tight end. He's just going to run a check down route in the flat. See him right here. There he goes. And there is no one. I mean, they're chasing after him, but there is nobody around him. So then he gets an extra, you know, seven, eight yards after the catch. It's just too easy. Bear has gone over 100 receiving yards in the game, including a touchdown. Travis Green, not much there. I want to go back to something you said about Ohio State, coached by a former Bowling Green head coach, Herman Meyer. Does it matter at this point if there's style points for the Buckeyes in that Big Ten championship? I don't think it does. I mean, I think if they beat Michigan State, they're in. But obviously, that's been a very much point of contention. I think a lot of the voters will want to see how they look against Michigan State. I feel like if you have that zero in the loss column, it matters. Does it matter that they went undefeated last year? It should not. Just like the way, the same way I didn't think Alabama should have been won just because they were defending national champion. You go on this year and this year alone. Slant incomplete. Intended for Joplin. You go back in this series 10 years ago, Bowling Green handed 10th ranked Northern Illinois its first loss of the season 10 years ago. That was a Husky team who beat Alabama that year and yet lost to Bowling Green. Here's another big third down that Bowling Green is facing. Very similar field position they were in the last time. They converted, got down, and missed the field goal. But Northern Illinois desperately needs a stop. Third and nine for the Falcons. Handing off. That's hot good. Gets to the 30, and that's it. You see the green line about two yards ahead of the 30-yard line. It's a 45-yard attempt is the edge of Tyler Tate's range. And with that play call, the running it on that third and seven, I think that was showing you that they're thinking this is two-down territory. Hey, if we get the first down, great. But if not, we're going to get enough yardage where we keep it in the fourth and shorter opportunity for them to go for it on fourth down. Only seven fourth-down conversions this year. Bears in motion. Johnson. Here's the pressure, so he tucks it. Scrambles, has the first down. Matt Johnson, pressure all around, pulls it down, and moves the chains to the 25. Matt Johnson has made great decisions all night long, whether it's been throwing the football or knowing when to keep it. Here he is, looking down the field. He gets into a little bit of trouble. And then, look at him, he knows where the chains are, goes up and gets that first down. That was huge, and Coach Clawson watches on and celebrates, realizing how big that first down was. First and 10 from the 25. Is under review. I think I want to see where his knee came down. Matt Johnson at the end of that run, his momentum carried him forward pretty far, but his knee definitely went down. We will take a closer look as the replay officials take a closer look. I want 
and we'll find out if that's a first down or not. Visit ultrazerodrop.com now for free shipping. Wear them for 30 days. If you don't run better, send them back. Zero questions asked. Ultra. Zero drop, zero limits. We are still under review on what was called a first down run by Matt Johnson. The question is, where does his knee go down? Right around the first down line? like right on it I think you got it I mean this is one of the toughest calls to overturn the spot of the football especially when it's so close I mean, it has to be really obvious for them to make it a, a change of where the ball was spotted and I think that's going to stand as a first down after review the ruling in the field of a first down is confirmed yeah so they're not even saying it was inconclusive they're saying hey we saw it and it was a first down Well, they are rooting for Bowling Green in places like Waco, Texas, where a Bowling Green win would open up a spot that right now has Northern Illinois penciled in in the DCS. Baylor just one of the teams who could possibly benefit from a Bowling Green win, a Northern Illinois loss. The rest of the MAC is rooting for the Huskies because a BCS bowl berth means roughly $8 million more to be shared among the conference. First and 10 from the 25 for Matt Johnson of the Falcons. Travis Green turns the corner. Green pushes close to another first down. There's a flag down. Holding, offense number 55, 10-yard penalty, first down. The MLS season comes to its conclusion tomorrow, Saturday. Sporting Kansas City and Real Salt Lake looking each for their second MLS Cup. That's Saturday at 4 Eastern on ESPN, also available on Watch ESPN. Soccer, speaking of soccer, the, the U.S. team got a really bad draw for that World Cup 2014. The group of death. Yeah. <laughs> I don't follow soccer that well, much, but that you, sounds like not the best draw. When you, when you say you're in the group of death, that's not a good thing. No. So after the holding penalty, back to the 35-yard line. First and 20 now for Matt Johnson. With just over a minute left in the third, an 11-point Falcon lead. Travis Green. Driven back. Jamal Bass and George Rainey lead the way for the Huskies. Rolling under a minute now and a third. A Bowling Green team who came in leading the nation in time of possession. You figured the game plan for the Falcons would be first downs, yep. run the football, lead on the clock. <laughs> Instead, it's been huge plays. Now, with an 11 point lead late in the third, starting to milk it. Johnson steps up, pulls it, sprints ahead again, tripped up from behind. Jamal Bass got him from behind right around the 23. And again, Matt Johnson, we've seen what he's done with his arm, the four touchdowns, 373 yards on the game, but how about the decisions he's made and the quickness he's shown with his legs? That was a big pickup. Keep that third down and seven coming up. 
We go to the fourth in the Marathon MAC Championship. Bowling Green looking for its first title since 92, trying to bust the Huskies. Cargo planes have perfected the art of moving heavy freight. So has the all-new GMC Sierra. No competitor offers an advanced cargo system that includes an easy lift and lower tailgate, rear bumper step, LED lighting, and movable upper tie downs. The all-new GMC Sierra. Incredible thinking in the form of a truck. Trade up to this all-new specially equipped 2014 GMC Sierra for a total value of $52.50. Destroy the dragon and take back your homeland. I promised I would do this, and I think I must try. If this is to end in fire, then we will all burn together. The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog, ready PG-13, December 13th. Imagine this cute blob is Metamucil, and this park is the inside of your body. See, the special psyllium fiber in Metamucil actually gels to trap some carbs to help maintain healthy blood sugar levels. Metamucil, three amazing benefits in one super fiber. I kind of knew their reaction would be a little like, you know, what are you thinking? Uh, I had a knot in my chest. I didn't really want her to go, but I knew she could do it. I felt like there were bigger and better things for me to do. She took what she was doing seriously. My self-confidence just went through the roof. It was awesome to see her transform from a girl in a small town to a soldier. You made them strong. We'll make them Army strong. Talk to your son or daughter about joining the Army. Find out how at GoArmy.com slash parents. How could switchgrass in Argentina change engineering in Dubai, aluminum production in South Africa, and the aerospace industry in the U.S.? At T. Rowe Price, we understand the connections of a complex global economy. It's just one reason over 70% of our mutual funds beat their 10-year lipper average. T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a prospectus or summary prospectus with investment information, risks, fees, and expenses to read and consider carefully before investing. Hey, guys. Sorry we're late. Did you run into traffic? No. Just had to stop by the house to grab a few things. Mm. You stop by the house? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, whenever you get your stuff, run upstairs, get cleaned up for dinner. You leave the house in good shape? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Last second field goal. Yeah, sure you did. Introducing AT&T Digital Life. Personalized home security and automation. Get professionally monitored security for just $29.99 a month with limited availability in select markets. Try Chick-fil-A's Peppermint Chocolate Chip Milkshake. Available only for the holidays. ESPN College Football Primetime. Stanford, Arizona State, Saturday. The BCS talk for Northern Illinois is on hold for now. Bowling Green on 11-point lead on the Huskies. Start of the fourth quarter, and it begins with third down for Bowling Green. From the Northern Illinois 22, this is third and seven for the Falcons. Matt Johnson, incomplete. Joe Windsor applies the pressure, nearly gets the sack. Johnson just does get rid of it. And now a discussion about grounding. Right around the outside of the tackle box, That's now the flag. That's what the officials were discussing to see where Matt Johnson was in the pocket. Did he get outside the tackle box where he could throw it? And he has to get it past the line of scrimmage, too. Here's where he has to get outside of on that side. Watch where he sprints. So outside that hash. The ruling in the field is an incomplete pass. Intentional grounding. Offense number 11. There's not a receiver in the area. The ball did not go beyond the line of scrimmage. Loss of down. Fourth down. So he got outside the pocket. He did that part okay, but he had to get the ball past the line of scrimmage, which he couldn't because Joe Windsor was hanging all over him. Look at Matt Johnson. He's trying to get outside. I don't even think he realizes. Man, Joe Windsor just yanks him down. No chance to throw that ball past the line of scrimmage and a big stop for Northern Illinois. Treat this just like a sack. 
which moves it back to the 34-yard line, making this a difficult kick for Tyler Tate. He missed from 26 earlier. They're going to line Tate up for a 52-yard kick. It would be his career high. They got to be careful for a block here, too. Zero block kicks on the year for Bowling Green. 52-yard kick. It's good. A career-long 52-yarder for the sophomore kicker, Tyler T. And it's a two-touchdown lead for Bowling Green. Tyler Tate with the impressive leg for Bowling Green, well past his career long. He missed from 26 on his last attempt. When he showed up on the video board, he gave a big thumbs up, comes back from 52 and boots it through. Could give a little thumbs up for that one too. Tyler Tate missed a 45-yarder late versus Mississippi State, then came back to make seven straight. That was a game that Bowling Green almost won yeah, at Mississippi State, or maybe should have won. Yeah, they had a drop pass late in that game, or they would have beaten Mississippi State. And the missed 45-yarder from Tyler Tate. Booms through the 52-yarder indoors here at Ford Field. Yeah, I think the kickers are liking this surface playing indoors. No elements to have to deal with. A two touchdown lead for Bowling Green, trying to win a MAC title for the first time since 1992. Trying to keep Northern Illinois out of a BCS Bowl and open up a spot for somebody else in college football. Harris Logan brings it out. Shouldn't have. Cost him about 13 yards. This is Jimmy V. Week to donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Log on to jimmyv.org or call 1 800 4 Jimmy V. 100% of all donations awarded go to cancer research. In downtown Detroit, Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, our entire Friday night crew. Marathon MAC Championship. Northern Illinois has come from behind the last two years to win it. Last season, they played their way into the Orange Bowl. Northern Illinois, with the win tonight, likely goes to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. They have to come back from down two touchdowns in the fourth to do it. Jordan Lynch keeps it. Ryland Ward on the stop. And if you're Jordan Lynch and you're Northern Illinois, I think you have to see this as an opportunity. I mean, you're, you have so much at stake that's on the line. The trip to a BCS Bowl, a MAC title. And for Jordan Lynch, personally, he's got to see it as a challenge. Hey, this could be a big moment for him to get him that invite to New York, which I feel like he deserves regardless. Zips the second down pass complete to Jawan Breskison. Well, Breskison with another big grab. That was well covered, too, by Bowling Green, but he just kind of went out there and snatched it. Cameron Truss in coverage. He's got decent coverage. Just bodies it up. Nice catch. Lynch right back to Breskison. There's a flag down, though. Delay game offense. The umpire was over the ball. The offensive team snapped it. Five-yard penalty, first down. This is something that defensive coaches love to see <laughs> because that umpire is over there slowing down the offense when they're trying to go hurry up. And you see the frustration on Rod Carey's face. There's the official standing right over in the middle of the ball. Now, he's supposed to get out of there. Obviously, he's right in the middle of a lot of traffic. The Husky snapped it too fast. Take the sweep. Lynch bounces away from the first tackler. Can't get away from the second. Well, I tell you, a lot of credit should go to Mike Elko, the defense coordinator for Bowling Green. This defense has done an outstanding job containing Northern Illinois, not giving up the big play, making them go the distance, which they have struggled with. And they've done a great job tackling in open space, not giving up many yards after contact. 
Brian Thomas finishes that one off. Play fake. Lynch. Intercepted again. Second interception he's thrown tonight. Aaron Foster picks it off, and now Foster has blockers. Inside the Husky 30, Aaron Foster steps out right around the 20. The senior from Bloomfield, Michigan, intercepts Jordan Lynch. He had thrown only five picks all year, two tonight in the MAC championship. And we were just talking about Bowling Green's defense not giving up that big play, and it's frustrating for an offense. You want to take a shot, and that's what happened. Jordan Lynch forces this ball down the field. Aaron Foster, who had a couple nice pass breakups in the first half, makes an easy interception. That was a poorly thrown ball and a poor decision from Jordan Lynch. Now Bowling Green with great field position and what could be the dagger. The, 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 this could be the blow right here that finishes, it finishes this game off. There's still 12.58 to go, but this game may result in a spot on the BCS. Matt Johnson, things complete. It'll be first and goal, Bowling Green. But if the Falcons finish this one off, might result in an open spot in the BCS and an open invitation to New York for one of the other Heisman Trophy candidates if Jordan Lynch doesn't get the invite. Two picks tonight. His team trails by two touchdowns in the fourth. Yeah, when you look at the margin of error for Jordan Lynch, because he plays in the MAC. He doesn't play at a top 10 program. The margin for error is so slim where one bad game could have that type of impact. Flag down, false start. False start. Offense number 65, five-yard penalty, first down. Still first down after the false start penalty against Bowling Green. First and goal for the Falcons. Johnson driven back by Jamal Bass. Dave Clawson, who led turnarounds at Fordham, at Richmond, now at Bowling Green. Un unsuccessful season as the offensive coordinator at Tennessee, but that's the blemish on the resume of a coach who has built turnarounds at all three of his head coaching stops after the Jordan Lynch interception second and goal for the Falcons here Travis Green bounces outside Green gets to the six third and goal for Bowling Green clock rolling under 11 minutes Two touchdown lead. The Falcons will have a chance to make it a three score game. Yeah, it's a must stop here for Northern Illinois. Feel like they have to force the field goal. Of course, they'd love to get a turnover. So they watch them when they're tackling, stripping the football, trying to create that turnover. Foster still reliving the interception. Third and goal. Johnson. Shovel. Touchdown to Travis Green. The shovel pass for a touchdown. The fifth passing touchdown of the night from Matt Johnson. And Bowling Green has a three touchdown lead in the fourth on Northern Illinois. I don't think you can say enough about Matt Johnson's performance tonight. 
He has been spectacular. Three hundred ninety-three yards. Five touchdown passes to five different receivers. That is the first kick that Bowling Green has had blocked all year long. The interception by Aaron Foster leads to the touchdown pass. Matt Johnson to Travis Green on the shovel. And the Falcons have a three touchdown lead in the fourth. Both sides of our family came up the Chisholm Trail in the 1860s. We've ranched in Wyoming ever since. Technology doesn't help us a whole lot out here. We do things the way they used to do it. We trail our cattle, live with our livestock, stay out here on the range and take care of it. That is an understatement. Hope it's cool we sit at the bar. The other tables look taken. Mmm, these are the best in town. This is our apartment. Our apartment. Weird name for a restaurant. More chips, please, waiter. Tostitos, Cantina, Chips, and Salsa. Real restaurant taste, wherever your party's at. This helmet is just torturing my hair. Try head and shoulders for men. You can reach pull them all the levels of flake-free scalp and hairness. Check it. Seven benefits every bottle. Head and shoulders for men. Let wishes come true. Brilliant gifts for mom at a perfect price at Zales. You know that one's yours, right? They've each had eight. You seven. Is it because you're a slower eater? Or not man enough to claim what's rightfully yours? First it's a wing, then it's your seat at the table. So tell me, are you a little baby boy? Or are you a big, strong man? I'm a big, strong man. Okay. Grab a seat. The game is up. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings Beer Sports. Bowling Green is 10 minutes and 17 seconds away from busting the BCS Greens of Northern Illinois, opening up a spot for somebody else. Sports Center right now on ESPN, getting his set for Championship Saturday around college football. Begins with the Conference USA Championship at Rice between Marshall and Rice early tomorrow. That's noon Eastern. You also have the big one in the Big 12 with Bedlam, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Baylor, Texas later tomorrow from Floyd Casey Stadium. Last game ever at Baylor's Stadium before they move into a new one on the Brazos. Could be a big day in the Big 12. And it could begin with a big night on Friday night, a Bowling Green win over Northern Illinois. For more, here's Chris Cotter. Carter College basketball women's game, Kentucky and Baylor, fourth overtime. Baylor trailing by three on the missed free throw. Alexi Prince is going to get an opportunity to tie it right here. Looks good. In and out. Doesn't go. Men's game. By the way, gets started in about 15 minutes' time over on ESPN. Julius Randall. wonder if the nightcap will be as exciting as the women's game was, Carter. Wow, that Kentucky Baylor doubleheader taking place at AT&T Stadium, the Cowboys Stadium. Kentucky in a triple OT. To the outside, Juwan Breskison on first and ten. Last Northern Illinois possession resulted in the second INT thrown tonight by Jordan Lynch. Straight ahead Stingley. 
before third and short. Here's Allison. Danny, you mentioned earlier the energy NIU came out of the half with, and you could feel it, you could see it on the sidelines. The thing is, they've struggled to maintain it, and as you can imagine, the concern and frustration is starting to mount. Helmets being slammed, but there is still a belief. Guys on the sideline are reminding each other, hey, we got time, we got time, we're not out of this completely. But the body language we saw right there didn't look good on the Husky sideline. That Stingley tripped up by Brian Sutton. The spot shows Stingley right on the unofficial yellow line. First down, Northern Illinois. Mm. Looks like they yeah, possibly could have been down as well. Right. Maybe happy yard shy, but it's in the books now. Lynch out of the backfield. That's Spencer slipping his way. For another first down, Lynch finally makes a stop, DJ Lynch. Northern Illinois is gonna have to start picking up their sense of urgency and even their play callings, and I feel I have to, I feel it's gotta be adjusted where if they're normally balanced, they use Jordan Lynch as a runner, but they're gonna have to start featuring him as a passer if they wanna get their way back into this game with only 8.45 left. Lynch, nothing there. And this is the reason, because every one of these runs that doesn't go, those precious seconds are ticking away. Where if you would attempt to pass, you know, you get a big play or it goes incomplete, at least the clock stops. Second and eight now, Lynch incomplete, intended for Breskison, making it third down and eight. For the Huskies with 8.15 to go. Bowling Green closing in on its first MAC title since 92. Just three years ago, this Bowling Green team won only two games. On third and eight, Lynch is gonna keep it. Think the fly sweep, Lynch keeps it on third and eight. Obviously two down territory. That's why Lynch went out of bounds there. Still, I thought maybe he was going to stick his shoulder down. Something we saw him do several times in the first half. Saving a blow to his body, and they're going to talk this one over, realizing the importance of this fourth down. First time out, Northern Illinois, still full time out. Time out, Northern Illinois. Fourth down and eight for the Huskies. of the Mid-American Conference. We back the Mac. The spectacular luxury of the versatile Traveler Camel Hair Blazer from Joseph A. Bank. Elegant or casual, now just $200. And the best $200 Camel Hair value in America. We're making it work at Joseph A. Bank. Holiday travel. <laughs> Here with my fiance's family instead of watching the game. Now I'm rethinking joining this family. What? Fight fear of missing out on football. Download NFL Mobile and get coverage of every NFL game, exclusively from Verizon. So you can have a getaway from what you know. So you can be surprised by what you don't. Get two times the points on travel and dining at restaurants from Chase Sapphire Preferred. So you can taste something that wakes up your soul. Chase Sapphire Preferred. So you can. Last year, the U.S. used enough plastic water bottles to stretch around the Earth over 190 times. Each Brita filter can take up to 300 of those bottles out of the equation. My life right now is really busy. Halfway across the globe tonight. I came into Supercuts and they know exactly what I want. 
feel really good that you were able to make somebody look their best. Gives me the confidence that I need. I would say he's rocking the time. The 2013 Marathon Mac Football Championship. Brought to you by Marathon. Fueling the American spirit. And Joseph A. Bank. We fit most everyone. JOSBank.com. Mac Commissioner Dr. John Steinbrecher flanked by the representatives of the BCS Bulls, ready to extend an invitation to Northern Illinois. If the Huskies can come back, they would all but certainly wrap up a bid to the BCS, most likely Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, but for now it's fourth down and eight. Lynch on fourth and eight, incomplete. Breskison goes up for it, doesn't make the grab. Cameron Trust there in coverage. Bowling Green takes over. 8.06, 20 point lead for the Falcons. In Northern Illinois, offensively, they have just been out of sync all night. Here's Breskison, he's covered by Cameron Trust. Just a little bit out of bounds. And they've just, they've missed by that much all night. But you gotta credit Bowling Green's defensive effort. They have put forth. This is the top defense in the MAC, and they have outplayed Rod Carey's Northern Illinois team. So the Falcon offense takes over with a three touchdown lead, 8.06 to go. And the Falcons, who lead the nation in time of possession, they've racked up 517 yards. They took take over at the 41. Travis Green across midfield to the 46. Saturday night, the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game, 8 Eastern. Duke trying to spring the huge upset on the Heisman front runner, Jameis Winston, and number one ranked Florida State. Danny Cannell's alma mater on the brink of playing for the national championship. They're close. Four touchdown favorite against Duke. Matt Johnson has been terrific tonight. One of the lingering questions for Matt Johnson is, will he make Danny Cannell's top 10 quarterbacks at the end of 2013 with a performance like tonight? Do you think Matt Johnson might play his way onto this list? <laughs> He's been impressive. <laughs> Santa checking with our graph department if we could slip him on there. And this is the top 10 quarterbacks of the year. I kind of combined some stats with win losses and the efforts they've put forth this season. Of course, Jameis Winston just talking about Florida State. He's had an outstanding year. And then I think, you know, this kind of opens up a discussion into the Heisman because with this performance, it might open up for a guy like Teddy Bridgewater, potentially get invited back. He had a couple of signature moments the other night. And their win, A.J. McCarron, who even though they lost, it's, it's crazy now, you lose one game and you're all of a sudden knocked out. And he had three touchdowns, zero interceptions in the game they lost. He still played great. This is Travis Green. And as opposed to the uh, quarterback stock report, <laughs> right. which is not a top 10 list, this that, is, that yeah. is a top 10 list. This is. And I think you're right, Danny, if, if Jordan Lynch tonight, if, and again, this is all up to the Heisman Trophy voters, the ballots are submitted on Monday. We will discuss what this means for the Heisman race in New York when we come back. The Intel powered two-in-one. The new guy got it for spilling coffee on his old computer. A tablet and laptop in one? You've been asking for a new computer for years. Are you going to watch things happen? Or make things happen? <laughs> that should do it. A laptop when you need it, a tablet when you want it. In here, holidays are anything but a silent night. Because Fridays gives you a Jack Daniels sirloin or double glazed ribs and an appetizer for just 10 bucks. So bring your party to ours. In here, it's always Friday. Come on now. You know this one. A man. Big man person. It's a big painted man person. No, think bold like cheese at Zings. Viking lieutenant on a warship. No, it's a game day fan. Really? Viking lieutenant on a warship? 
I said that? I didn't say that. I'm the brick, man. I want to throw bricks. I want to throw bombs. I have to destroy you. I'm coming hard. There's going to be blood. At the end of the day, Eric Paz get knocked out. This dude's going to be sleeping. Wake up. I want to retire you. I want to hurt you. BKB2, a premiere event tomorrow, only on DirecTV. MLS Cup, live on ESPN, tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern. Third down and one for Bowling Green after Northern Illinois uses its second timeout, just 6.27 away from a Bowling Green upset of 14th-ranked Northern Illinois here in the Marathon Mac Championship game in Detroit. This is third down and one. Travis Green converts and keeps pushing inside the 30-yard line. Clock rolls to 6.20. Bowling Green gets a key conversion on first down. We want to show you the Bowling Green Acting Sports Information Director, Scott Swiegen. Scott is taking 18 credit hours. There's Scott. He is taking 18 credit hours as a junior right now at Bowling Green and acting as the sports information director for the Bowling Green football team. We asked Scott, all right, well, what are your plans for next year? He says, well, I don't have a job yet. <laughs> he graduates in August. Scott has done a terrific job for Bowling Green this year in getting us ready for this Marathon MAC championship game. So rather than advocating for a coach to get a job here and there, we're advocating for <laughs> That's right. a, a budding SID Third star. And final timeout, Northern Illinois. 32nd timeout. And a great story, too. Since seventh grade, he's been helping out with the football program, grabbing stats, notes, helping in, and he's going to be doing, he's going to be in this business for a long time. Yeah, Dave Clawson said, oh, he's terrific, deserves a job wherever he can get one. So there you go. Tomorrow, noon Eastern on ABC, 9 a.m. Pacific time, Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State, presented by K Jewelers. Bedlam with Big 12 title potentially on the line. Oklahoma State can wrap it up with a win tomorrow over the Sooners. If Oklahoma wins, that means that the Baylor-Texas game later tomorrow afternoon in Waco is the Big 12 championship game. Fun one in the Big 12. Yeah, some big games left in that conference. So there, there's a lot of what ifs, but again, a Bowling Green win over Northern Illinois opens up a spot in the BCS. There have been a ton of what ifs this college yeah. football season last month. So that uh, could go to the second place team from the Big 12. Johnson pulls it, runs from the 12, and it's all but certain now. Bowling Green is going to knock off undefeated 14th ranked Northern Illinois and the Falcons will claim their first MAC championship since 1992. The 25-game MAC winning streak all but certainly comes to an end tonight in Detroit. Yeah, it's going to be a tough way for Jordan Lynch to end his regular season career as Northern Illinois quarterback, but it doesn't take away from the fact that he has had an absolutely outstanding career for the Huskies. Travis Green wrestled down by Jamal Bass. So Florida State undefeated. Ohio State undefeated. Northern Illinois on the verge of losing for the first time. Second down and 13 here for Bowling Green as they try and milk the clock. Yeah. 
Two interceptions thrown tonight by Jordan Lynch. His Huskies trail 40 to 20, rolling near four minutes. So if this opens up a spot in the Heisman race, who does that help? Well, it's really wide open for that. You know, Jameis Winston is going to be the, the winner, most likely, unless there's some the catastrophe against Duke. But if you look at the opportunity for some players tomorrow, Trey Mason, Auburn, he has a big game. He's had an outstanding season. Braxton Miller or Carlos Hyde for Ohio State, if one of them puts up a kind of signature performance, it could all of a sudden vault them into that. It's really a battle for second place. There are so many guys, you know, that are right in the mix. I mean, you got Andre Williams at Boston College. He's had a great year. Does his, you know, with the numbers that he's put up, does that vault him into second? Third AJ, down here. No, AJ McCarron. Does he get some love because of what he's done over his career? You brought up Teddy Bridgewater earlier. Last night, he delivers a dramatic win for Louisville again. I don't think there's any question. I mean, we know Teddy Bridgewater is the number one quarterback entering the draft if he comes out. He's a junior. Yep. But there's no way you can say Teddy Bridgewater is not one of the four or five outstanding college football players in 2013. I agree, but you look at the Heisman, this is one of the things I don't like about it is it's very statistically driven. And if you look at his last three or four games, you know, he was around one touchdown, one interception, didn't have, you know, multiple touchdown games. And I think that held him back. And then they lost to UCF, and all of a sudden it was like he vanished from the radar, which I felt was not fair to him. It's That's become what the award's been about. That's a Bowling Green timeout, 2.50 to go. In Detroit, he steps up. If I can impart one lesson to a new business owner would be... One thing I've learned is... My philosophy is real simple. American Express Open Forum is an online community that helps our members connect and share ideas to make smart business decisions. If you mess up, mess up. Be your partner's best partner. We built it for our members, but it's open for everyone. There's not one way to do something. No details too small. American Express Open Forum. This is what membership is. This is what membership does. Where can a marketing administrator be a watercraft engineer? Where can a doctor serve his community while also treating patients around the world? Where can a student stay in school while expanding his education beyond the classroom? In the U.S. Army Reserve, you'll find the strength to develop new skills and gain an edge to get ahead. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. Visit GoArmy.com reserve. AT&T is making holiday shopping easier. Now, for a limited time, you can get half off the newest smartphones when you trade in your current smartphone. It's not complicated. Saving is better. Half off. Get it now for $99.99. Only at AT&T. Now, with any premium McWrap, Quarter Pounder, or medium fries at McDonald's, you can peel for a chance to win one of thousands of Xbox One Entertainment Systems or millions of other prizes and leave a legend. become the master. Look what I did. Look what I did. Control YouTube from your smartphone or tablet with the Vizio M-Series Smart TV. It's beautifully simple. Chris Cotter in studio. The women's game between Kentucky and Baylor was insane earlier on tonight. The men's game, they've just tipped up over on ESPN. You can see Baylor with an early lead over Kentucky playing this game down in Jerry World. Carter, Danny? Here in Detroit, Dave Clawson and the Bowling Green Falcons are closing in on the 2013 Marathon MAC Championship win. A 20-point edge now would hand Northern Illinois its first loss, its first MAC loss since October 2011. This is fourth down. Bowling Green just running clock. Travis Green. Or are they? Or are they? Touchdown! Northern Illinois gives up another score right up the gut. This one's on the ground. It's Travis Green, a 16-yard touchdown. It is now a route for Bowling Green.
Tyler Tate for the PAT. All Bowling Green. The trophy ceremony can be seen live on ESPN3. I'm sure everyone in Bowling Green, Ohio, and Falcon alums everywhere, all the way from Bowling Green to Detroit to camera two, will be celebrating after this one. Travis Green, you're thinking, hey, he's going to get bundled up in the wash, but he turns it upfield, walks in for the touchdown. It's been that kind of night for Bowling Green. Things have gone their way. Dave Clawson loves it. What a big win this is for him. Three years ago, they won two games. Two years ago, they had just 46 scholarship players. They won five games that year in 2011 with 46 scholarship players and the rebuilding job probably the biggest of them all for Dave Clawson after the turnarounds at Fordham at Richmond now Bowling Green the fifth year head coach has guided the Falcons to the MAC championship their first in 21 years and we asked him about his coaching future Dave Clawson said only I'm focused on winning the MAC championship. And that's exactly what the Falcons have done tonight. Caught by one of the Husky Upmen. They'll take it at the 17. And when we talk about Dave Clawson, and there's been lots of rumors about Dave Clawson and Wake Forest, and you know, that's life in the MAC. Yeah. And, and most of the time when coaches move on to bigger programs and it's happened to everybody from Dave Doran, Urban Meyer, uh, the list is very long. Most of the time it's with very goodwill and thank you, coach, and thank you for leaving our program on a great footing. We don't know anything about Dave Clawson's future except for what's out there, but uh, if indeed leaves Bowling Green, he has built the Falcons into a MAC champion. Jordan Lynch. Eludes the pressure, still delivering blows, he's still in bounds. Now finally wrestled down. Jordan Lynch playing hard to the end tonight. Well, Jordan Lynch has had trouble getting it going all night long. Much the credit of Bowling Green, who has really played him well. Their front seven has bottled him up, has prevented the big play. Here's the batted pass. Goulette gets the interception inside. And they have just done a great job playing team defense, swarming to the football, preventing those big plays, tackling an open field. And they, they, and they have been the better team tonight. There is no, no fluke about it. No, without question. And now for the Huskies of Northern Illinois, you go from being a win away from the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and the BCS to possibly the GoDaddy.com Bowl in Mobile on January 5th. That's the bowl tie-in at the top of the list for the Mac. Bowling Green, it's worth pointing out. I mean, because of all of the, the ranking and the BCS talk and the Heisman talk around Northern Illinois, there was some who perceived this to be, all right, the Huskies are just going to roll in Detroit. I don't think that was ever the case when you look at the two football teams, Bowling Green the capability of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Northern Illinois. The surprise is this is a blowout, a dominating game by Bowling Green against the Northern Illinois team who'd won 25 straight in the league. Two Big Ten wins this year, both on the road. They won seven road games this year, and Bowling Green absolutely takes it to them tonight in Detroit. Lynch gets the first down, minute 33, just a matter of the final outcome, but it's Bowling Green is going to take it. Jordan Lynch will take his team to a bowl, and then he'll start preparing for the NFL draft. He said, you know, he wants to take a shot at playing quarterback. I don't think he's opposed to playing something else, but I think he'll get an opportunity, especially with some of the offenses that are being run in the NFL now that could suit his style of a dual threat type of quarterback. You said before the game, 
better runner, better passer than Tim Tebow. If you'd put Jordan Lynch on the Tim Tebow Florida team, would have had good results. So yeah, does I mean, that mean Jordan Lynch has a better chance of being a successful NFL quarterback? I believe it does. I mean, I think when you look at what he brings to the table, I think he gets in the right squad. If he gets in the right offense, that's where he can excel. And I think where a team would use him too, because you're talking about 53-man rosters, I think he's a better potential H-back or something. You know, he's faster than Tebow. I think he's got better hands. And he runs more with power, too. I mean, he's a, we're talking about a guy who's over 1,700 yards as a rusher. He obviously knows what to do when he's running the football. And again, unlike Tim Tebow, who said, no, I'm, I'm going to be an NFL quarterback. I'm not going to be around. Jordan Lynch has said, yes, quarterback option number one. But he has not ruled out playing another position to get a shot at the next level. We had that conversation with Jordan yesterday. That's caught its first down, Northern Illinois, and here comes a chilly moment for Dave Claus. <laughs> Huskies playing it to the end. DJ Lynch on the stop. Got to know what's coming, right? He's got his headset off. <laughs> He's a smart there guy. Comes. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think he took a peek at the scoreboard. He knew it was coming. <laughs> Credit Coach Blossom because yeah. I think he turned his back with the headset off at precisely the right moment. I mean, that's a guy who is built programs time and again at the smaller levels now he does it in the Mac from two wins in his second season three years ago to a Mac championship and a 10 win season for Bowling Green Lynch walks in that's a touchdown for Jordan Lynch now the Huskies may as well be trying to get Jordan Lynch another touchdown some more numbers trying to get their fifth-year senior quarterback. Uh, some late numbers to try and boost that Heisman Trophy campaign. You can't blame Northern Illinois for trying to do everything they can to get Jordan Lynch to New York City for the Heisman Trophy presentation. Certainly the game decided, but that's a rushing touchdown for Jordan Lynch. That is his second rushing touchdown of the night to go with one passing, but the two interceptions and a blowout loss in the Marathon Mac Championship game. All smiles for the Falcons. The native of Buffalo, New York, Dave Clawson. A Williams grad. A career night for Matt Johnson. He's a first-year starter at quarterback. Johnson, 393 passing yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions, and a dominant victory for the Falcons of Bowling Green. <laughs> He's got some ice up in his shirt. <laughs> Northern Illinois goes onside. That's recovered by Bear, and that will seal it. A 47-27 win. Bowling Green has to snap it one more time, but they're going to win the MAC title for the first time since 1992. Trophy ceremony live on ESPN3 after the game. Snapping the 25-game MAC winning streak for the Northern Illinois Huskies.
with a victory in the Marathon MAC Championship. A big Saturday in college football just got bigger because there's another BCS bowl spot out there for somebody. With Bowling Green's 20-point win over 14th-ranked Northern Illinois. Dave Clawson and the Falcons celebrate in Detroit. Matt Johnson congratulating Jordan Lynch on his fine Mac career, but the Falcons win it in Detroit. For Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, our entire Friday night crew, I'm Carter Blackburn. Congratulations to Bowling Green. It's uh, one of the dip most difficult groups and couldn't get any more difficult or any bigger. This is Sports Center Live. Ohio State puts its perfect record on the line versus Michigan State. And what would an Auburn win over Missouri mean for the BCS? Our game day crew gets you set for Championship Saturday. Robinson Cano cashing in with the Mariners. Hear why Tim Kirchin says this might be a good thing for the New York Yankees. A deadly draw for the USA. Full reaction and analysis on when the USA World Cup chances took a major hit. Sports Center, let's roll. USA. Oh my God! Hope you enjoyed that college football action alongside Robert Flores. I'm Adnan Verk. Welcome to Sports Center. And I'm still dreaming the New York Yankees are going to make me a lavish offer. Well, Adnan, they do have money to spend, and they are doing it. Plus, a superstar is coming back. Here's what you need to know. Kobe Bryant making his season debut this coming Sunday against the Toronto Raptors. Yeah. Bryant making that announcement on his Facebook page with a rather lavish <laughs> vignette. He, of course, tore his Achilles late last season. A lavish vignette, one way of putting it. Also need to know the New York Yankees are making big-time moves, agreeing to a three-year deal with veteran switch hitter Carlos Beltran for 45 mil, returning to the American League. Sticking with the Yankees, you also need to know that Robinson Cano is fleeing New York for Seattle. A 10-year, $240 million contract tied for the third largest contract ever as he is moving out to the Pacific Northwest. In the NFL, you need to know that the Houston Texans firing head coach Gary Kubiak today after eight seasons and their current 11-game losing streak. Wade Phillips is the interim head coach for the rest of the season. Also need to know that the World Cup draw did not do the USA any favors. Group G with Germany, Portugal, and Ghana. Mexico more favorable in Group A, Brazil, Croatia, and Cameroon. What a game this was. Kentucky and Baylor women's basketball action. Odyssey Sims entered the game, second leading scorer in the nation, 27 points a game, and she would put on a show. First half, driving for the layup moments later. Baylor on the break, Sims. Stops, pops, and drops. Later, tied at 40. Check out the stutter step. Oh, another splash. 13 points in the first half, tied at 44 at the half. Second half action, Jennifer O'Neill. No slouch herself. Lay up and draws contact, fired up. Kentucky is up by four. Moments later, O'Neill from way downtown, counted. Wildcats up by eight. Six minutes left in the second half. It'll be Sims trying to claw the Lady Bears back in it. Slicing and dicing. Baylor down by three. Moments later, off the rebound. Sims pass inside to Nina Davis, who lays it up. We are tied at 82. Less than four seconds left, tied at 90. O'Neal. Uh oh. We're off to overtime. Trust me, we're going to be saying a lot of that. Baylor down by one. Sims driving. <laughs> Offensive foul. Kim Mulkey, your thoughts. Sims fouls out with 47 points. Less than 15 seconds left. Imani Wright 
for three. Nobody puts Baby in a corner. Tied at 104, we're headed to a second overtime. Less than 45 seconds left. Mackenzie Robertson. Nice move for the layup, a little fake. And Baylor's up 113 to 112. Castine Edwards, less than 10 seconds to go. We're headed to a third overtime. Baylor's up by two, Robertson. Nice dish for the layup. Mm. Baylor up by four. How about the athleticism? These girls still going hard. Less than five seconds left. Robertson to the paint. The shot is no good. Robertson can't get it to go. Mulkey wanted to foul. Hello. We head to a fourth overtime. Tied at 128. O'Neal for the layup. Kentucky leads it 130 to 128. Less than five to go. Alexis Prince. Uh-uh. Kentucky wins a wild game, 133 to 130. Fran Fraschilla with Kentucky coach Matt Mitchell. Coach uh, Mitchell, you played in one of the epic games, I think, in college basketball history. Describe how you feel right now. Well, just so elated for our players. You know, I messed around there and got a technical foul, and I was really worried about that, Fran, uh, uh, cost us the game. But what a gut check our players had, and hats off to Baylor. Uh, Odyssey Sims is unstoppable. The only way you could stop her is get her out of the game. So just a tremendous game. 